You found the WMIX Saturday Sports Show on AM 940 at WMIXSports.com. Cared for by Crossroads Community Hospital, the Saturday Sports Show has been recognized by the Illinois Broadcasters Association as one of the top radio programs in the state. That means the very best mix of local sports content is right here. From the powerhouse on Broadway, the Saturday Sports Show starts now. Yeah, something like that. Glad to have you with us on a beautiful Saturday morning in the King City for the Saturday Sports Show, all brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Chris Hugo with Danny Zerwinski in studio this morning. Of course, you'll find out today it's a busy day for high school sports. Boys track state finals wrapping up today. Of course, tennis state finals on the boys' side wrapping up today. Soccer still going strong with the 1A state finals. 2A and 3A are wrapping up sectional play. And then, of course, you have 1A and 2A baseball and softball sectional championships today. You have 3A and 4A for the most part. There was one softball regional championship last night, but you have 3A and 4A baseball and softball regional championships today. So there, if you heard the urgency in my voice, it is a busy day for high school sports. We're going to talk all about it here on the Saturday Sports Show. Loaded lineup in hour number one as we'll have Malford and Rams head baseball coach Tim Holloway. We'll talk to another Tim right after that, Tim Kraft of the Ducoin Indians, his team playing for a sectional title today. And, of course, Tim C. Witty, the Nashville Hornets. Hornets will battle undefeated Massac County in a sectional championship at DuCoin. That'll be a rematch of a game prior to that in April at Charlotte West Stadium at SIUC, in which the Massac County Patriots won 3 to nothing. Clint Turner, Mount Vernon Renner Rams track and field, will stop by today. We'll talk about the qualifiers' efforts yesterday and see who advanced to today's state final heats up at Charleston. So a busy day high school sports nonetheless. It's a beautiful day for high school sports. Temperatures are going to be cooler by comparison, about 73 degrees compared to where we were last year this weekend in the 90s. But it should be a great day for, for athletics nonetheless. Yeah, there's some showers over towards the Metro East right now, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a nice day. It should be anyway. I might get a spring shower, but... Hey, it's one of those days, probably, arguably, the busiest day of the high school sports calendar. And, it, and again, those of you that think it's an easy day for the media, check out everywhere and everything that goes on today in your local papers and radio and TV today and tonight and see just how busy the media is trying to cover all of the events, all the teams, and everything else in the state of Illinois today with, you know, you've got baseball, softball, track, tennis, and soccer going on. It's an impossible task, and the media is going to do the best they can to cover everybody and every team today. Of course, this is one weekend where we all try to work together, help each other out on the social media. You can follow us on Twitter, at WMIX Sports. And it's just a crazy, crazy weekend. And, you know, you know, you talk to guys like Mike McManus who, who somehow find ways to get everybody covered. Uh, you know, you think of Channel1450.com out of Springfield, of course, WFMB, mm-hmm. Sports Radio 1450. Phenomenal job. You just kind of look around the state at everybody's hub, and we're not trying to intentionally skip over anybody locally, far away, what have you. But it's a difficult weekend to get everybody in and try to get everybody the coverage they deserve because everybody basically deserves equal coverage. It just somehow sometimes doesn't end up that way. Of course, busy weekend for us. Of course, you have St. Louis Cardinals baseball on WMIX FM today against the Los Angeles Dodgers. More of that. Chicago Cubs in action on Wish FM. You have the Mount Vernon Rams in action today. Regional championship against the Centralia Orphans. 1045 is your pregame at the Heron Regional Championship. Of course, we'll have that here on again on AM 940 and WMIXSports.com. The Centralia Annies will battle for a regional championship. We'll preview that matchup as well. You can hear that game on Wiley 1210 as well as MyWithersRadio.com. Slash Centralia. But speaking of the Heron Regional Championship, the Mountford and Rams, the number one seed, the number two seed, Centralia Orphans. We'll preview that matchup with Tim Holloway. Not only that, our WMIX Sports social media question of the week is going to be up live on Facebook here in just a moment. We'll tell you about that after the break. You'll learn it whenever we ask Tim Holloway here on the Saturday Sports Show. It's all powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. We're back after these. When an emergency happens, time is everything, and you don't want to spend time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital. With our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge, the entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician within 30 minutes of your arrival when minutes matter. Choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, call 911. Response has been overwhelming to scheduling your service appointments online at FordSquare.com and KingCityChrysler.com. Hi, Roy Schmidt, President at Ford Square and King City Chrysler Center. We love that you've taken to our websites to schedule your service appointments and are always trying to find ways to make our service departments more convenient for you. 
Now we're proud to offer express lane fast oil changes and more at King City Chrysler Center. This means you can stop in when it's convenient for you without an appointment. We're even open on Saturdays from 8 a.m. until noon. Don't wait until it's too late to find out about vehicle problems. Come in for a quick express lane oil change and you'll get a free top to bottom vehicle inspection. It's the worry free way to keep your vehicle running smoothly. Come see us at King City Chrysler Center for quick, convenient service. Now open Saturdays from 8 a.m. until noon. Hi, this is Joe David Cummins, President of Community First Bank, asking why you bank with Community First Bank. Is it knowing your deposits are also vital to home loans in Jefferson County and our local economy? Is it having your choice of convenient locations and ATMs? Is it seeing a staff of friendly faces you recognize as your neighbors? These are all reasons enough to count, though you only need one, and we are honored you chose us. Community First Bank, welcome back to Personal Banking, member FDIC. And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX and WMIXSports.com. It's brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what health care should be. Proud to welcome back to the program for another week, Malford and Rams head baseball to- coach Tim Holloway. Tim, good morning. Good morning, guys. You know what? Great morning. Get to play the Central A Orphans today in a regional championship game. Nice rivalry going into that Heron Regional today. Orphans got a big walk-off win over the Carbondale Terriers. Rams, of course, beat Heron 12-1 to on Wednesday. Shaping up to be a good one. They've been close both times this season. No reason not to expect another matchup like that today. Well, you know, I just think that our guys are ready to go. They're playing with a lot of enthusiasm right now. We're looking forward to getting down there and getting this thing started. But, uh, you know, we're worried about ourselves. We're, our concern is what we need to take care of. And no matter who the opponent is, that's, that's our approach. Your approach, I think, has been very good. You mentioned the enthusiasm, and I think with a bunch of seniors, uh, sometimes teams lock up, sometimes teams get unfocused this time of year. This group, to me, seems, like you said, as excited and as locked in as I've seen a group of seniors in a long, long time for any sport. Yeah, they've come together at the right time, and, uh, you know, they're just, especially, you know, here since Saturday, I mean, they just are extremely excited and ready to play and we're having a lot of fun right now and they they want to keep this going for as long as they can uh you know we wanted we always talk about being good in may but with this many seniors they got on a roll in april and uh you know we started playing well in april and, and through may and uh you know, I really like where they're at right now, both mentally and in the way they're playing. In this game today, the third time this year you're, these two teams have played, is there really anything you can take from the first two games of the season in this matchup, or is this one just a new start to a new game here this morning? Well, I think uh, we're always trying to gather information. We learned a few more things scouting the other day, how to attack certain guys. And, and we also uh, reaffirmed some things we, we felt as far as attacking their hitters, but it's going to be a matter of just going. The kids got to go play. You know, they got to play the game, have fun, and we don't overload them with info. That's that's more for us as coaches. But um, you know, I think it's a matter of getting out there, and getting to the field. They're, we're getting ready to hit. I'm sure they're ready to be on the field now. But uh, just getting that first pitch and, and going and playing. Well, there's nothing more that either side could want. I mean, a regional title, you're playing on the last Saturday in May. You're playing against your arch rival. Is there a concern, maybe by coaches on both sides, that the guys will be too fired up, too emotional, too excited, too early, and may, and may you know may affect how they play as the game goes along? I don't think so. I, I say excited. I think it's just more enthusiastic. Uh, and not, you know, you get worried when guys get tight, but... We don't worry about that rival stuff. You know, we're, we're just going to play against the ball. It doesn't matter who we play, and I, I really mean that. Um, I think this time of year you'll see some teams, uh, you'll see some teams or some players either run from the, what I would call the big A to the drilling or, or embrace it. And the main thing is you got to embrace it because, in reality, it's going to make you run a little faster and hit the ball a little harder and throw a little harder. So uh, some guys don't like that feeling, but, our guys seem to embrace it, and, uh, you know, we got to make the most of it. You had me worried there when you said run from the big A. I didn't know where you were going with that one. But uh, I, I look at this thing today, 
in a game like this, neutral place, five times in six years these two teams have played. And, you know, this is one of those that obviously when these guys look back, it won't be today. This is one of those special moments that these guys will talk about, kind of like us old fogies do, with different games and different teams. They'll look back on and talk a lot about it in the, in the, in the years to come. I think so, and that's, you know, some we always talk about is making memories, and that's what these guys are trying to do. They're, they put themselves in a good position. They've done everything they possibly can, and, uh, you know, it, it, right now we don't want to talk about a whole lot. We just want to play the game. We're having a blast, and, uh, you know, that's, that is something that they're going to remember. Well, something they're going to remember indeed. And, Tim, because it is such a big day, we don't want to keep you too long and know that you have other things to worry about right now. But our WMIX Sports Social Media Question of the Week is, after hopefully celebrating a Rams regional championship today, what are your plans this Memorial Day weekend? Well, after that, I hope to get home and uh, get some uh, grass mowed. That's number one. I haven't been able to do that. It's getting high. Uh, you know, I've got my one son is playing at nine and one, so I'm afraid I'm gonna miss those games. And my little guy's off today, so we'll have some fun out in the yard. But uh, Coach Clark's doing some scouting for us, so not many duties after the game besides mowing. There we go, Coach. Best of luck to the Rams today. We'll see you around ten o'clock. All right, guys. Thank you. That's Tim Holloway, head coach of the Mountford and Rams. And on a day like this, I mean, everybody's exactly. busy, everybody's running around, and obviously the focus needs to be on getting the team ready for, for the Centralia Orphans. Just as, wow, big game today. Of course, as you said, five out of six postseasons these two teams have met. Of course, we'll, we'll talk about it later on a little bit more. But 08, they met for a regional semifinal at Mount Vernon. 09, of course, and we'll recap this again later. 09, uh, they met in a regional semifinal at Marion. 10, they met in a sectional semi at Altoff. 11, it was a regional championship game at Marion, of course. And then skip last year. They both go to separate regionals, don't see each other, neither team escapes. And then you have this year for a regional championship at Heron. So five out of six seasons in cl- the class expansion of four classes, these teams have seen each other in the postseason. Mount Vernon has won all of them. In fact, Centralia has not beaten Mount Vernon since the 2008 regular season. It was a close one, 3-2, to two, if I recall, on March 31st of that year. So uh, a big game. You know, the Orphans are amped up just as much as the Rams. Means nothing, the first two matchups. And I know that it's one of those deals where today it's like, you know, you guys are kind of talking blasé about the South Seven Conference Championship. Means nothing today. I mean, the loser of this game, you know, will will not be happy. They're going to be looking at this. I mean, you can win 27 games, and you want to win 28. You don't want to stop today. These guys from Mount Vernon have a lot of fun. Both sides having fun. I mean, Centre gets that big emotional win the other day against Carbondale to get in this game, and now they got a shot. They haven't beaten Mount Vernon in five years. It lost twice this year already. There's guys on that team, on those seniors, that haven't beat Mount Vernon from Centralia. Nobody on that team has beaten Mount Vernon that's playing on Centralia today. So it's one of those things where you've got a couple teams that are just going to lay it all on the line, a rivalry, a thing. You know, what else can you ask for in a regional final that's going to happen today at Heron? Well, exactly. It should have the makings of everything any baseball fan would want more today. The Mountford and Rams and the Central Orphans first pitch will be at 11 o'clock. Pre-games at 1045 here on AM 940 and WMIXSports.com. We look forward to bringing you that broadcast. Of course, you can stay up to date on the air, on the Internet, or on Twitter at WMIX Sports. Loaded lineup for you here in hour number one. Dempsey Whitty, of course, the Nashville Hornets still to come. Clint Turner, of course, later in the 8 o'clock hour. But it'll be Tim Kraft. On the Saturday Sports, we'll talk about the Duke and Indians, of course, rebounding from last year's emotional walk-off walk to the Benton Rangers, I believe it was, in, in the regional championship this year. Pretty well skunked the Rangers, 10 nothing in five innings there at their home complex before advancing to the Nashville sectional. So we'll talk about Duke Coyne Carlisle coming up here on the Saturday Sports Show. It's powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. We'll take a break. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Back after these. It happens every spring. You need a great quality, new-to-you vehicle. There's a reason why Second Chance Auto has been helping put families into affordable, dependable vehicles for over 32 years. Honest, fair deals. Ain't nothing fancy, just great vehicles with warranties. Honest deals and bank rate financing for all. That's the only way Second Chance Auto will do business. And you don't even have to leave your home to get credit approval. Call Second Chance Auto at 244-4582 and get pre-approved right over the phone. They know bad things can happen to good people. Second Chance Auto, Route 142 East in Mount Vernon. 
the Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois proudly welcomes Dr. Brian Steinke to their medical staff. Dr. Steinke earned his medical degree at the University of Illinois in Chicago and has degrees in anatomy and physiology from UC Berkeley, and he brings prestigious credentials to the center. Dr. Steinke is a gifted physician and contributor to orthopedic textbooks. Call 618-242-3778 or visit their informative website at orthocenter-si.com. I'm Kevin Snyder with a look at your next rad weather. For today, we'll see clouds and sun. A spotty afternoon shower or thunderstorm high of 74. A shower or thunderstorm around for tonight. Otherwise, it will be mostly cloudy with a low 53. Clouds and sun tomorrow with a shower or thunderstorm high 75. Then Memorial Day Monday, clouds and sun breezy, warmer and humid with a thunderstorm high 84. Next rad weather from WMIX, Mount Vernon, Illinois. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 uh, Miami, uh, uh, South Beach, bringing the heat, uh. Welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX and WMIXSports.com. It's brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. We're Chris, playing that song after last night? That's interesting. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> I saw a rotator that I made no, like I know. five years ago, yeah, which Pacers. explains why there's still late 90s Will Smith in there. Right. Yeah, All of that yeah. aside, I got, I got the Pacer joke, believe it or not. Yeah. Sometimes I follow the NBA, although not, not that often. Anyhow, all of that aside, we're proud to welcome our next guest to the program. A return appearance this year for Tim Kraft of the Duke Coin Indians. Chris Hugo with Danny Zerwinski in studio. Coach Kraft, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. First question I have to ask, of course, the Benton Rangers and Duke Coin Indians last year regional championship game ends not in a way you'd ever want to see a game end. A walk-off walk, I believe it was, in a regional championship. This year you guys get some nice revenge, 10 to nothing in five innings at your home park. Advance to a Nashville sectional where you escape regional rival Murfreesboro 2-1. to one. Things seem to be rolling the right way right now for the Ducoin Indians. Yeah, um, you know we we played pretty pretty good baseball throughout the regional. Um, had to play Pinkneyville in the first round, and they're a big rival. And then uh, got a rematch with Benton as well, and they've kind of become a rival here because we play about two times a year before we even get to the regional. Um, you know the Murfreesboro game. It was a <laughs> I don't know how to really describe it other than it was kind of stressful and exhausting and you really didn't know what to expect and, you know, you're down to your last possible pitch and, you know, the kids found a way to uh, end up scoring a couple runs and come through and get the win for us. A veteran team that you've had this year, did that play a part in maybe, like you said, the stressful game but understanding the situation, not getting rattled as that game went along the other day with Murfreesboro? Yeah, it, it, it did help. Um, you know, I, like I said, one of those things when you're on your last pitch, you just don't really know what to expect. Um, and it, it just happened the three players that really came through big for us were seniors and uh, have been on the field for us for a couple of years. So it, it did definitely help. I think it was a little bit calming knowing that you had some older kids coming up. I mean, you couldn't expect for them to pull off what they did. But, uh, you know, I, I think that them being through it for a couple of years now definitely helped. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in your history. Is Carlisle, this is kind of like an old home week going on with, with you coming in to play against Carlisle? Because I thought, I thought maybe you have coached there before. Is I, am I right in thinking that? Yeah, uh, my first job was at Carlisle High School um, about, well, I guess about 10 years ago almost. Um, I, I coached with uh, the, the former coach, Coach Wheeler, uh, Gary Wheeler, uh, for about three years before I ended up coming back to DuCoin. Gary, so I know you've learned a lot of baseball because your dad coached, obviously, and then all this other, and Gary Wheeler, of course. Going into this today with Carlisle, I, have you seen them before this year? Did you guys play them, or is it just basically a scouting report at this point? Um, we did play them about two weeks ago. Uh, we lost to them four to nothing. Um, they're a very good team. Uh, definitely have a lot of pitching, and uh, a couple. I know a couple of athletes right off the bat in their order are both signed to go to McHenry next year to play baseball. Um, very good defensive team. Uh, we're just going to have to, well, we'll have to get some better at bats today than what we did on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, and you know, just get out and compete. I think <clears throat> anything can happen at this point in time. So, you know, hopefully, we can come out and play well. Come out and play well at Nashville, of course. Familiar with the field as is Carlisle. Does that help in the sectional situation, or is that kind of an over overblown fact of this time of year? Uh, you know, I, I think it helps with some familiarity. Um, the kids are, are comfortable around that field, and they kind of know where, you know, how to play the field. Um, it seems like on that field, the ball jumps to right field a little bit more than others. 
uh, it allow you know we know that and there's there's not quite as much of an adjustment, but uh, you know it's still not your home field, so it is a little bit different. A little bit different, but not different to Ducoin. I think a lot of people obviously overlook the fact that you know Ducoin football. Everybody hears about that, but. You look at Ducoin baseball, and I'm telling you, when you played, even when I played back in the late 80s, early 90s, Ducoin baseball has been very good for a very long time. It's one of those overlooked things that uh, Ducoin's a very well rounded boys' sports program with football, basketball, track, and baseball. Very good baseball program there at Ducoin for many years. Yeah, we've been blessed. Um, the kids, you know, it does get downplayed a little bit because our football teams have so much success, and that's hard to uh, look past. But, uh, you know, before I came in, Coach Davis was here, and he kind of jump-started it again, and, and I've been fortunate enough to take over and, and uh, just kind of keep it rolling and try to just keep building. Keeping it open and keeping it out, and we know you're very busy today, and we're not going to keep you very long, but of course, as you know, when you join us, we always have that one last question. Today's question, our WMI Sports social media question of the week is, after today, obviously, hopefully after winning a sectional championship, what are your plans for this Memorial Day weekend? Uh, well, we got church, uh, church picnic on Monday, Monday oh. afternoon. Uh, I think I am going to take my four year old golfing this evening for his first time. So that's going to be, uh, it's going to be my activity for today. Hopefully it'll be, uh, a happy golf trip rather than a, uh, remembering golf trip. <laughs> Hi, I, you know what? Um, I suspect that I know Monday some people might be going to that church picnic by chance. Yeah, you probably do know a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> that's when they usually get hurt or come back the next day of the golf course kind of sore. So, you know, that's kind of their thing. Yeah. I'll probably see you later on today because I think that's on my agenda, too, to uh, play a little golf as well over in that particular place. Yeah, we've got the uh, – we always have that uh, Monday afternoon Indian ball yes. game. So, you know, uh-huh. some of those guys like to go out and relive their glory days from uh, <laughs> softball and, and stuff. So it always gets a little interesting. <laughs> Coach, outstanding. Good luck to the Indians today against Carlisle. All right, thank you. That is Tim Kraft, of course, head coach of DuCoin Indians Baseball. And, of course, we remember a game back in March. <laughs> the Rams and Indians played 3 nothing. DuCoin beat Mount Vernon that day, one of just three shutouts the Rams suffered this year. And, of course, two of them were back-to-back on a Friday-Monday turnaround, modern day in Belleville West. But that's a good Indian team. Oh, it's a very good team. Shut out Mount Vernon 3 nothing. They've got a lot of big wins. That's Carlisle team, like Coach Kraft mentioned, a couple kids going to McKendry. they got some arms. They have some good pitching as well. They don't have throwers. They have pitchers. Well, and this is a good Carlisle team, and they have been all year. And to beat Nashville like they did, because I felt like Nashville had a lot of momentum going into that, it's pretty good. The winner of this game, and I know T-Town's out there, the winner of this game is going to be a nice favorite on Monday at Solje. Oh, I, I have to think so. But here's the thing. You look at this at the Ducoin Indians, and you look at a program probably overshadowed by football. And, and understandably so with all of their success. But you look at the talent that they've had go to Southern, that they've had go other places under Coach Kraft, and it's just a tremendous program. So wish the both Indians the best of luck today, if both are in our listening area, of course. We need to talk some Nashville Hornet softball. We'll do that in just a moment here on the Saturday Sports Show. Of course, Tim C. Whitty will join us live. You take a look at what the Hornets have put together the past couple of seasons. Obviously, the state title last year, doing it without any seniors, of course, that were active. And then you take a look at what they're doing this year. And, of course, Massac County owns a victory over Nashville previously, 3 to nothing mm-hmm. at Charlotte West Stadium at SIU back in April. And what an incredible game that was. I remember listening to that one on the V and just crazy. Yep, means nothing, though, today. You're Except exactly right. Report. Of course, we'll preview all of the regional and, and sectional championship games today in high school baseball and softball across all four classes in the second hour of the Saturday Sports Show. It's all brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. We'll take a break. Back after this. When an emergency happens, time is everything, and you don't want to spend time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital. With our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge, the entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician within 30 minutes of your arrival when minutes matter. Choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, call 911. How do the best continue to get better? Hi, this is Chase Landers with Landers Collision Centers. We're no different than any team. When you're at the top of your game, the best wants to play for you. That's why, with the addition of our new shop foreman and the rest of our body shop crew, Landers now has a combined experience of over 70 years in dealing with the best parts and repair finishes on the market. This means when you walk into Landers, you can breathe a little easier knowing that your vehicle will receive the best quality repair 
by the best certified technicians within a reasonable amount of time. Again and again, we work directly with most insurance companies and have loaners and rental vehicles on site for your convenience. We're proud to not only be the standard, but to keep raising the bar in collision repair. Come meet the staff, take a tour of our facilities, and get to know the Landers crew that Landers Collision has so proudly acquired. Big or small, Landers fixes them all. Give us a call when 888 Landers. That's 1 888 Landers. State Farm, this is Jessica. Hey, Jessica, Jerry Newman. Does State Farm offer more discounts to more drivers? Yep, like the good driver discount. So it's for good, but not great drivers. No, Jerry. There's also the multi-line discount. For calling from multiple lines while driving. You should never use a phone while driving. I only make calls from my car when I'm stuck in a ditch or something. Are you in a ditch? Yes, I am. State Farm offers more discounts to more drivers than any other insurance company. Get to a better state. One more reason to call State Farm Agent Tony Wilton Mount Vernon at 242-1421. Glad to have you back on the Saturday Sports Show, WMAX and WMAXSports.com. It's powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what a health care should be. Something like that. I have no idea. Just trying to stretch out the bump, I guess. Smoke the post, I guess they would say. But Chris, you go with Danny Zerwinski. Smoke what? Okay, go <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, the uh, powerhouse on Broadway. Glad to have you with us. Dempsey Witte, of course, of the Nashville Hornets, joins us now. Coach, good morning. Good morning, guys. How's it going? You know what? Going pretty well. I imagine a little bit better for you, though, playing for yet another sectional title today, this time against Massac County at DuCoin. But First question, hopefully loosen things up a little bit. Last time we had you on, of course, Wayne Hari did not ride the bus to Mount Vernon. Please tell me he is riding the bus to Ducoin. No, he's not riding. Oh. He, he's driving separate. How, how, is that in his contract, or how does that work? You know, he has not had one. He has not taken the bus one time with us all year. So we, we're just going to keep. I guess uh, you know he'll have to just find a way over there. Well, that's that's good for him. He needs to do that. You, you know, people talked about Nashville all spring. What's wrong with Nashville? What's wrong with this? I tried to get him to understand. You had two or three games at most where you stubbed your toe in about a week or two time. Is has that been kind of good for your team to kind of be the one that's been laying in the weeds, waiting to come around here in postseason? Yeah, I think so. I mean. uh you know, and I heard the same things, and, you know, it's a quality conference. So we had three losses in the conference, and, and we knew coming in it would be tough to win uh, seven or eight games in that conference. And so, uh, you know, the other loss was Massac. So uh, but I think it was good for us to kind of refocus a little bit and, uh, and just work a little harder at practice. And, um, you know, so I think it's, it's worked out for us that we did get beat a couple times. Uh, when it worked out for you, you know, a couple of stumps, it's like Nashville's defending champ and they're down and aren't going to do anything. Here you are in a sectional final. Talk to Tim Kraft. We've talked to Tim Holloway. Vet, coaches who have veteran teams this year. Your team veteran, the fact that a lot of older kids, but also a lot of experience. When you look at it that way, did that help your team kind of get through and understand, hey, we're playing the Duke Coins, the Pinckneyvilles, and the Cartervilles of the world to get to this point where we're at now? Yeah, I think so. I, I think that definitely helped us that, uh, you know, we had some kids that played the big games and kind of, you know, they remember how we took the same approach last year as, as the same thing we're doing this year. And so it definitely helps having some of those people that were, were back from last year, and it, it helps us out a lot. Back from last year against Massac County, and this is a game that you guys played at SIU a few weeks ago, and when Massac won, I think it was 3 nothing. In the scheme of things today, besides the scouting report, does that game really play a factor in this, or is, is it is it just a game out there that you play that you know a little about them and they know about you? Yeah, I think that's the main thing. I think we, we learned a little bit about them, they learned a little bit about us. And, uh, you know, we just try to go play some of the best teams we can, and uh, Mass X a quality program, and plus it's a great experience getting to play at SIU. Uh, Carbondale, it's a great facility, it's great for the kids, so... Uh, no, I'm glad we got to play that game, and um, you know we're just looking forward to the rematch today. Big crowd, nice facility there at Ducoin Baseball Field, the softball field now. Great complex. Any advantage to you because your girls have played more games at Ducoin than Massac County has? Uh, I doubt it. I, I think it's, it's pretty fair for both teams. Uh, but, yeah, it, it's quite a nice complex there, and uh, they did a great job with everything. And, and it should be a, a great day for softball. Great day for softball and for your team and your program. And Nashville, of course, making that trek down to Ducoin for the sectional final. It keeps rolling, keeps going with this group. Is it kind of a, a, a deal for this group where it's winning is what they should do and any more than, than anything else? Well, it, you know, the expectations are definitely high. And, you know, I'd rather have expectations high than to be at a place where, where people didn't care too much or weren't too concerned about it. And I think our girls have done a great job adjusting 
to that. Um, you know, we talked about that at the beginning of the year, and uh, you know, we kind of talked about we're going to get everybody's best shot as the year goes on, and we got to be prepared day in, day out. And we got a lot of room for improvement still, and we got to try to get better. And, and I think the girls have bought into that, and they've done a nice job with that. Speaking of that, and we know you've done a good job with things. We want to give you a time to get ready for your game and get you out of the road because, you know, you got to ride the bus, and Wayne Hardy doesn't. Yeah. Uh, our final question to you. <laughs> hey, I, I, there's there's got to be something wrong. We're, we will probably look into that contract before it's over to see if we can get that <laughs> switched. Um, our final question is our sports, WMI Sports social media question of the week. And this week's question is, Obviously, after hopefully a, a sectional championship, what are your plans for this Memorial Day weekend? Uh, well, hopefully, hopefully we got practice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see I, if we if we can uh, pull one out today. We'll uh, look at practice, and then Nashville has our, our MyFest going on. And oh, I kind of yeah. like to go down there and look at the antique cars. And uh, I got a nineteen twenty nine Model A, so I kind of enjoy looking at that a little bit. No kidding. Yeah, my grandpa actually built it from scratch, so uh, wow. it's kind of a, you know it's important to the family, and we kind of tried to redo it up a little bit here lately, and so it's it's neat to have. I forget, I, yeah, at my fest, you know, nothing goes on say after eight nine o'clock at night either. It's pretty quiet then. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, <laughs> always a great time, Coach. Good luck today against Massac County, and hopefully we can talk to you again next week about maybe playing in a state title game. Yeah, hopefully we'll see you guys soon. That's Coach Dempsey, Whitty, Nashville Hornets, all all around great guy. And of course, I forgot about my fest. Oh my gosh, we'll have to have hourly checks on Bo Meyer probably. But that all of that said, of course, that game will be on V one zero four seven today. As far as I understand, of course, Massac County and Nashville V one zero four seven dot com. The V as they call it. We have a busy 8 o'clock hour here on the Saturday Sports Show. Hard to believe we're already thirty nine minutes into it. Clint Turner running Rams track and field still to come here. But you look at that game, you look at the Nashville Hornets, and, of course, last year, no seniors. They had Molly Boroviak, of course, who, who was injured, and we talked to her along with Dempsey Whitty last year before the state title game. And But to, to think about what they've been able to do, it's not easy to, to win a regional championship. It's not easy to win a sectional game. They've been able to come back and do that for another year. And, of course, it, it just seems like winning and winning big games is second nature in Nashville. Well, it is, and this is a big-time game for them again, and, their kids are used to playing in big time games, basketball, softball, and otherwise. And again, they're in another big game. They defending state champs. I mean, people don't understand when you play likes of Pinckneyville, Carterville, Ducoin, it's three times each, or two times each, and then have to go through their non conference schedule. You're going to have some issues. You're going to. It's a long season. It was a pretty good spring for a lot of games. And this Nashville team stubbed their toe a few times. Everybody's looking around like, well, "What's wrong with Nashville?" Well, they had a bad week. I mean, that was it. Had a couple two three games. And ever since then, they've been fine. They're in a sectional final again today, looking to get uh, four more wins and defend that state championship. Well, and you know, obviously, we have a very extensive coverage area, Massac County, Metropolis, still within that, but. It's one of those where, you know, Nashville, of course, in our backyard, AM 940 used to be the home for Hornets sports. Yep. So, you know, obviously there's an emotional tie, emotional connection there. So good luck to the Hornets and the Lady Patriots today in a Ducoin sectional title game. You're should, shredding. Should be a good be one. Be careful about that. I know. That'd You're be getting close. That'd be, be like accused. eight-fifths of the entire state. I know. I'm just which would be like well, one of the I'm just saying fifths. the other accusatory things of colors. Oh, Homer? Yes. Hey, I, li- I like both. Yeah. I like everybody. Me too. You know. Yeah, is what it is. We need to talk some track and field here on the Saturday Sports Show. 1A, 2A, 3A boys, of course, state finals going on in Charleston. We'll talk with Mount Vernon Rams head coach Clint Turner about that coming up here on the Saturday Sports Show, powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what health care should be. America is a nation on wheels. Everyone has at least one automobile. We use them for shopping, work, everything we do. But they can be a threat. Some accidents can't be prevented. Your professional Pekin Insurance Agency, Page Insurance on Crown View and Mount Vernon, can help protect you from a large financial loss when an accident happens. Call Page Insurance today at 242-7000 about low-cost auto insurance from Pekin Insurance. Ask them about the many money-saving discounts that are available. Depend on your hometown professionals. Pekin Insurance. When you hear the warm, inviting sound of a crackling fire, what comes to mind? A rustic campground? A cozy cabin? How about the new Good Samaritan Regional Health Center? Our new family lounges feature a lot of comforts you might not expect. Things like this. No, that's not a babbling brook or serene stream out in the countryside. It's a two-story waterfall located right here at Good Samaritan. And that's not the only way we're raising the bar for patient comfort. We've added lush healing gardens. 
as well as wall after wall of beautiful artwork, all designed to create the perfect healing atmosphere. And if all this sounds like music to your ears, we encourage you to check us out. Chances are, we're not too far from where you are right now. The new Good Samaritan Regional Health Center. Raising a hospital, raising the bar. Southern Illinois now has a better home for sports. It's the all-new WMIXSports.com. Jam-packed with local scores, video highlights, and archives of every local sports broadcast on WMIX. Did your team win? Missed that game-winning shot last night? Didn't catch your favorite coach on the Saturday sports show? WMIXSports.com is right at your fingertips. On your computer, your smartphone, your tablet, or your video game console. It's the all-new WMIXSports.com. Another free service from Winners Broadcasting. And we welcome you back on the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX and WMIXSports.com. Glad to have you with us as we welcome Clint Turner, head coach of Running Rams Track and Field. Coach, good morning. How are you guys doing? You all doing pretty good. Beautiful Saturday morning here in the King City. Hope it's the same up there. But, of course, the Running Rams finished in third place in the Salem sectional behind Eastside or behind Cahokia and Eastside, respectively. Now, when you're in the same sectional as, as those two teams, shouldn't there be a, some sort of, of rule that the next couple of teams should advance to state to? <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Just with how things are set up in in track, you just you got to perform, and and you've got either a performance standard you have to make, or you're first or second in the section. And I think a lot of people try to rely on being first or second and get all caught up in who they're competing against. They just need to spend more time taking care of themselves, and and you're better off that way. And that's what that's how we kind of approach it. So. I look at this track event today. It's one of the state meets, state things I've not been able to to go to in high school sports. Uh, you need to put it on the bucket list. I, I, I want to desperately. I got to almost go one year, got denied. But anyway, for our listeners that have never been like myself, the spectacle of the state track meet today with everything that goes on, what's it like? Well, um, if we're heading over right now, um, our pole vaulter needs to, he has to weigh in and get his poles checked, and he'll start at 10. But there will already probably be, I don't know, maybe a thousand people already filtering into the stands. And before it's all said and done, uh, if you've ever been to the uh, the big football stadium, track stadium here at Eastern, it's going to have about fourteen to fifteen thousand people in. They're all knowledgeable of track, and they're rooting for not just their kids. And the difference, I think, where people get kind of an amazement when they when they come to any track meet or even cross country is how everybody kind of pulls for everybody um uh, just it's it's a good <laughs> i've never been happier with kids and with with coaches and a lot of friendships and even though we're competitors uh, everybody kind of takes care of everybody but when you've got you know that many people in the stands and you've got really, really knowledgeable announcers. They know the teams. They know the teams' uh, nicknames. They know the kids. And they really will stir you up and get you going. And uh, a lot of times when the races are coming down the home stretch, fourteen to 15,000 people raise up out of their seats and, and bring the kids home. So they just... The kids feed off the energy, and it, it's just a great, great atmosphere. You have a pole vaulter you mentioned starting at 10. Joe McDonald goes 13-9 yesterday. Where does that rank? What does he have to do today to come back with a state title? Well, with with uh, how it works in the qualifying rounds, there's just it's really not a competition as much as there's a standard that's set, and they tried to get a certain number. Ideally, they would get like 10 or 11 into the finals. So you just keep jumping until... You have that number. Now it's hard to work that out exactly that amount, but so there's a lot of times fourteen or fifteen kids in the final. Thirteen nine in two A is all he had to jump in order to make the final. So he took four jumps. He jumped at thirteen, thirteen three, thirteen six, and then they they had the group jump at thirteen nine, and they got it to uh, I think there's eleven or no, I think there's thirteen or fourteen kids in the finals today for two A. You know, what's he? He's just going to have to come in. The biggest and hardest thing right now, going in and getting started in those opening heights and not get rattled 
not let the nerves get you and just stay relaxed. Uh, I told Joseph when we went to the indoor state meet up in Bloomington early in the year, he didn't do that. He, he was real relaxed, did a real good job. Um, and so if he can do that today, uh, you know, we'd love to get in the top nine and just be an all-stater, especially with it being just his first year up here. And uh, so hopefully, hopefully it'll work out. And, of course, speaking of working out, you had uh, four other events qualified after that sectional at Salem in which the team finished third. Um, all in all, though the team didn't advance, still qualified in five events is pretty impressive. Well, we, we kind of a disappointing day to where we didn't uh, get anybody through. Everybody was just really close. You know, I don't know if the weather had something to do with it. A little bit of, uh, thanks, Coach, a little bit of, uh, you know, just being cool and breezy, but... You know, our, we, we're just out. You know, a lot of times it's the top nine or top twelve to get in, and we're like twelfth or thirteenth or fourteenth overall. And you know, those days happen, unfortunately. And I was a little disappointed, but the kids uh, had a good, a good attitude about it, and they, they felt good about themselves. And uh, we'll just have to root on Joseph today, and hopefully he can uh, again get in that top nine. Okay, we know you're busy. You're heading over to the stadium to get ready for a big day of track and field, so we're going to get our last final question into you, our W Bike Sports social media question of the week. And this week's question is, what are your plans for this Memorial Day weekend? Well, <laughs> school's not quite out, so i got to kind of deal a little bit with some things, getting that ready for Tuesday. But I also manage the rec club pool Yes, in the summer, myself uh-huh. and Coach Goodhart kind of oh, take no. care of that so i it opens up today so i kind of left him in charge of that and that's probably where i'll be spending most of my day is taking care of uh the water and uh the baby pool there you go outstanding <laughs> that's where i'll be on the morning <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> busy so summer I'll try, ahead. Hey, I'll try to get in a little bit of the indy 500 i'm a big race fan and just you know try to relax a little bit coming out of the state meet today so. Uh, it certainly would be earned relaxation. Coach, good luck to McDaniel today, and and good luck to all the, the tracksters out there because that is a great event and one that we certainly would love to be able to come see sometime oh, soon. Oh, got to come up one, but you guys need to just plan doing your sports show up here next year on Saturday and just sit in the stands and, and take it in for a while. You'll, you'd enjoy it. I, I really think we would. Coach, good luck to everybody today, and, of course, we can't wait to have you again soon. Okay, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. That's Clint Turner, head coach of running Rams track and field. And, of course, not only involved with the rec club, but at, at times, you know, I know last year they didn't have uh, the club going, I don't believe, but the SI Speed along with Owen Allen, uh, when they get that track and field club going over the summer um, or any club, you know, that's that's a great thing as well. So hopefully we'll be able to talk to him again over the course of the summer and see how things are going there uh, if they get that off the ground in 2012 and 2013. Plenty more to come on the Saturday Sports Show. We're out of breaks in hour number one, but... We'll say stay here and talk a little bit, but talking with him about the spectacle that is track and field, and of course, don't forget our WMIX Sports social media question before I get to that point is, what are your plans this Memorial Day weekend? Of course, we're going to tell you time and time again in hour number two, there's going to be observances of various memorial ceremonies going on all across the state. If you, if you can happen to make it to one, that's great. If you find it, see a serviceman out there, even though it's not Veterans Day, it's Memorial Day, of course, usually honoring the fallen. But if you can find a vet out there or a serviceman uh, that has you know, served our country, please issue them a, a nice thanks, whether it's a handshake or just a, a token of sentiment of some sort. But um, that's what it's all about, of course, as we're here talking about high school sports today. Um, however, if you have a high school sports bucket list, Track and field at Charleston has to be one of them. We, we tell you in the wintertime, the wrestling state finals are another one with the pride and pageantry that goes on up there. But that is one, and I am not complaining because the reason I can't go usually is because a doubleheader against Highland during the girls, and then usually you're, you're almost a given for a Rams baseball regional championship game on, on the Saturday before Memorial Day. So I'm not complaining at all for not being able to go, but that is one that someday I would like to take in. Yeah, I, I've done football, baseball, basketball, both basketballs. Um, softball is the one I have not been into yet. I would like to go to East Peoria and kind of check things out, depending on what goes on. Track has always been up there. Almost had a chance to go a few years back, denied. So, you know, that's one of those things, the spectacle and the, and the 
everybody, 15,000 people cheering on these athletes. And like Coach Turner said, the spectacle, the known ability, who advances, who doesn't. That's one of those things that I would, you know, like to go to one Saturday in the future just to say, I've seen the spectacle, I've seen it all. And, and again, everybody has talked to me and said sports. They've been to a lot of the other ones as well. And they said, yes, the one you really got to go to. The one that is not on my bucket list, unless I have a team up there, is the state football championships in Champaign. I've been. I was it at cold. the state finals when it was at Bloomington. I would go to that. Um, if it, hopefully for fo- see the problem with football is it's always the weekend of boys basketball, <coughs> so you're kind of always caught up there. Maybe a team will get up there one day. One day we have to broadcast, which would be. I cool. would love to have the problem of figuring out how to get Rams yeah. football on and Rams basketball on the same day. I would yeah. love that issue. A lot of people would. Um, but that said, it's for me, Champaign just seems to be more of a wind tunnel through the football facility than as than does Hancock. Well, and then you're going to alternate every other year now. Well, now yeah, you're going to go from you know uh, the middle of state Champaign to the more middle of state DeKalb every other year because of the Big Ten schedule and whatnot. This uh, with Illinois football, but you know, it, I, yeah, I know it, it's one of those things where. Yeah, Northern Illinois is so close to the middle of the state because that's all we heard about golf when they moved it. But, you know, that's one of those deals there. It's football. Here's the track, thing. You know. Southern has a chance to get that. There is no lodging that's capable of handling. Right. There are not the amenities needed. Yeah. And, and I know people are unhappy when Southern did not get that chance, did not get that shake. They're not that's going to the reason. without the hotel rooms. Right. They don't have it. You the weather would be warmer. It'd right. be, it's a beautiful facility. They've done great things to it. Um, they have great suites now. Um, just it is Saluki Stadium is incredible now, but because of that lack of of hotel space and and people, I mean, because the football teams don't even stay in Carbondale, they stay here. Yes, yeah, Mount. I Vernon. mean, the opposition. Youngstown uh, State always does. Yeah. Here, the thing about too about football, and I can understand why they're not coming here because there's not enough hotel rooms. Golf makes no sense no. to me. Mo- I, and here's the problem: because there's three classes, you're going to need three golf courses. Or whatever, they could do something different. I just think, and I know Bloomington Normals had boys since the cows came home, but you need to move golf down in the middle to southern part of the state in the in the in for that event. The girls' event at at Hickory Ridge and Stone Creek or at Carterville, that's fantastic places to have it. Cocapelli, you know, you could have the golf at golf in Southern Illinois. There's plenty of courses you could play the state golf tournaments at down here. Plenty. Question will be, I guess, hotels and otherwise. But I bet Coca Pella, you could pull it off, or in Lake, you could pull West it off Frankfurt's. because you could stick people in Benton and Mount Vernon as far as hotel well, rooms and be within 15 Benton. minutes. All right. Benton. Get the resort. Carbondale, Benton, Frankfurt. Not Benton. Our Carbondale, two courses. Frankfurt has a state quality golf course. Carlisle. Coca Pella. Um, Carlisle's north, though. That starts getting. I see what you're saying. Yeah. You know, I- I'm talking about south of 64. Where it's okay. at least 50, 60 degrees. Okay. That stuff of playing in 20, 30 degree weather like they had to last fall, wind, rain, cold, and, and all that see, stuff. See, and that's where snow, I have a problem with it. Up north, up north, up you, north, maybe you're doing that more into the summer. I can't, I can't imagine you are. But when you're used to playing in shorts and short sleeves, and then you add the weight of maybe, maybe you have a long sleeve t shirt on, or maybe you have a long sleeve polo topped with rain gear possibly on top of that, because you're guaranteed rain in central Illinois usually that that particular weekend of the Gulf State Finals. And then you have to wear your rain pants or your wind pants or things like that. Mm-hmm. You're not used to that. That impacts as, your swing. As a golfer, you can handle wind and cold or wind and hot, but if you have to throw in rain, that's a whole different ballgame. Rain, wind, and cold are brutal threes in the battle of golf, and more times than not you do that in Bloomington. That's why I think they should move for sure golf – down here, and I think what they did with baseball, where they split one A and two A and moved to three A, four A to Joliet because nine tenths of the teams are from that part of the world. I think that's fine. I, I don't have any argument with well, that. Well, that's the mindset of people who want the basketball split. I'm moving one A and two A, keeping that in Central Illinois. People who want to leave Peoria, of course, and want to see one A, two A back in Champaign. That's not happening. And then three A and four A. People talking about the United Center. Are you kidding me? Yeah, you can't who, fill uh, Peoria. Who, right. Who's going to go to the United Center and watch 3A4? This is no disrespect. Obviously, we primarily cover a 3A school. But have you ever been to Peoria for 3A, 4A weekend, I, the old double-A weekend? If, I'm not, that's yeah. a rhetorical you. I know you have. Yep. But, I mean, there's nobody there. If you get a Centralia, like Centralia brought a lot of people when they went 11. I know Mount Vernon would take a lot of people. I know Carbondale has. You know who the draw has been the last two years? Uh, Jabari yeah. Parker. 
before that, Derek Rose. Right. So other that's than that, it. you know, if you move, you think Peoria Civic Center is cavernous when that's going on, you move that thing to United Center, it's going to be worse. You got to talk about moving that. If you're going to move it, you have to go like Northern Illinois. You go to Paul's campus out by O'Hare or the place at the Horizon, at Rosemont Horizon, not the Rosemont Horizon. All State anymore. Arena. All State Arena. Yeah, that goes back to Dallas Comedy's days at DePaul. You got to move it somewhere where you're going to have about nine, ten thousand seats, just like Peoria, but move it up to that part of the world. I can understand that. Softball can stay where it's at. Yeah. I mean, everybody. There's a lot of teams that play softball in and around that area. They're three A, four A. You know, but that could be a topic maybe in the summer we could discuss about where to put everything. No doubt about that. Of course, you wonder where Lance Bolt was this morning. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk to him next week, of course, to wrap up the Lady Rams season. One. They, knowing that their banquet is, of course, this coming Thursday, we'd like we'd like to talk awards with him next week. So we'll talk with Lance next week, Lady Rams softball. Lady Rams, of course, we'll talk about it in hour number two. Right when we come back from a break, we'll talk about what happened with the Lady Rams softball team. They lost 6-5 to five against Carbondale on Tuesday, and we'll talk more about that and, and how their season came to an end and what can be done so that that doesn't happen again. There's nobody really to blame for the situation but the rule book, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the Saturday Sports Show. Don't forget Rams Baseball Today, regional championship game against the Centralia Orphans. That game will be at Heron. We'll have that for you. 10.45 is your pregame. 11 o'clock is your first pitch on WMIX and WMIXSports.com. That's all still to come. Of course, in hour number two, we'll preview your 1A and 2A sectional championships today. We'll talk about some of the games that actually happened last night, including a 3A regional softball championship between Columbia and Waterloo. We will also talk about 3A and 4A regional championships. Of course, we'll preview more in depth Mount Vernon and Centralia today. We'll also talk about some of the other regionals going on and, and what we can look forward to possibly make our predictions for next week, see who's going on to the super sectionals on Monday or see who's going to be playing in 3A and 4A sectionals over the course of the coming week. You'll want to stay tuned right here on WMIX and WMIXSports.com. Maybe give us an answer to our WMIX Sports social media question of the week. What are your plans this Memorial Day weekend? We'll give you our answers later on in the 9 o'clock hour, but all in all, a good question. Memorial Day weekend can be a lot of things. It's a holiday, of course. A lot of people will cook out. Some people will do some other things. But there's also tons of memorial celebrations and observances. I guess not really a celebration per se, but observances going on around the area. You should take one in. We'll take a break. Brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. We'll be back after these. Too expensive to get back into shape? Not anymore. Ren Lake College's new fitness center is only $53 per semester. They've also thought of everything with universal machines, free weights, treadmills with dedicated TV screens, ellipticals, and more. Qualified dance instructors are also available. Or go at your own pace with DVDs that can be used in the exercise room. Best of all, it's open seven days a week. Check out the Ren Lake College Fitness Center in the Marketplace off Potomac Boulevard in Mount Vernon. Or log on to renlakecollege.edu slash Fit Center. If you can't pick us up where you live, move. Move. This is WMIX Mount Vernon Marion, another Withers Broadcasting Station. The medicine shop in Mount Vernon would like to announce the grand opening of a custom compounding lab located right next door. What is compounding, you ask? Well, quite simply, it's working with your doctor to solve problems. Have you ever had an infant who couldn't keep antibiotics down? Compounding is formulating that drug into a suppository. Problem solved. Have you ever been nauseous and unable to take tablets? We can compound that anti-nausea drug into a cream you simply apply to the skin. Problem solved. Worried about side effects or risks associated with oral pain medication or hormone therapy? We can compound pain medications or hormone meds into a topical cream that will avoid most, if not all, of the risks and side effects. Problem solved. These are just a small sampling of our ability to better serve our patients. It's another way we at the Medicine Shop stand out from the competition. Give the staff at the Medicine Shop a call today. Bad credit, no credit, no problem. Automart of Salem is here to help. Automart of Salem is your local shop here, pay here headquarters. Quality cars, vans, SUVs, and trucks in stock now. All credit applications are accepted. Shop here and pay here at Automart of Salem, 1819 West Main, Salem, Illinois. Shop online at automartofsalem.com or call us at 618-548-8611. And 
We welcome you back for Hour 2 of the Saturday Sports Show. Chris Hugo with Danny Zerwinski, brought to you by Crossroads Committee Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Hey, it's what health care should be. You bet it is. So glad to be with you today. And, of course, it is such a busy day in the world of high school sports. Plenty of high school baseball and high school softball going on today. We told you, of course, prefaced before the break as we come into Hour number 2, we talk a lot about high school softball, and, and we kind of didn't – we kind of dismissed what happened with the Lady Rams game on Tuesday in that hour number one, but here we are in hour number two, plenty of time to talk about it. And you hate to ever have a game end the way that the regional semifinal Heron ended, but Lady Rams, of course, were up 5-1 to one going into the fourth inning, the bottom half. Carbonell comes back with five runs to take a 6-5 lead, and ultimately... Uh, the Terriers are able to come away with with a big win thanks to Mom Nature because Mother Nature, of course, comes in. They see a lightning strike. We're automatically off the field for 30 minutes. At, at the very least, each strike resets the count. Then you have rains come in behind the lightning. Of course, that indicated a thunderstorm was coming, obviously. Not, not hard to figure out, I suppose. But, you know, after about a, a delay of probably roughly, I don't know, an hour, hour and a half or so, uh, it ends up the game was called, and because four and a half innings had been played, or, and Carbondale, the home team, was coming up to bat, and they were on top, it ends up that Carbondale wins that game six to five. And I know that's frustrating, and regardless of whom you're rooting for, that that's a tough thing to have to to have to endure. But you know that is the rule, and, and that's what happened. And I do hate that for Lance Bolt and the Lady Rams to see their season come to an end that way. I would feel the same way if Kim Wheeler's Carbondale Terriers team lost that way, and it, it's a bad thing. But it's in the rule book, and you kind of have to go with that. And I know a lot of folks probably upset with Heron over the situation. It wasn't their call. Uh, it was the call of the umpires. And, and regardless of, of how you feel about that, they did what they felt needed to be done. They were looking out for the best interest of the kids. And, and with no guarantee the, the game's in on Wednesday due to the weather that was coming. You know, I you hate to see a season in that way, but they made the decision they had to make, and it ended up being probably the right one. Well, it is in the rule book. That's number one. That's probably something that needs to be looked at or changed maybe in the future. By the IHSA, this sort of problem does not happen very often. Obviously, the chances of weather and rain and whatever else happening doesn't happen very often. So that's one of those deals where if it's a game in March, April, beginning of May, regular season, ah, you know, knock it, whack it at four and a half innings, go home, whatever. But when you have a postseason game and you're in the bottom of the fifth, Carbondale's batting, and it's a six to five game. And like you said, it was about five twenty seven. I remember writing down in my book that the first lightning strike happened or saw they saw lightning, not a strike. And at that point it became a weather delay. It's thirty minutes for every time they hear we hear thunder or we hear lightning. And when that went on, obviously the rain came in. So now, not only now you're against the lightning and thunder, which I think the last one we heard while we were there was around 645, which meant a 715 at the earliest start. Now, the other thing you have to throw into this is 30 minutes, and then each team can have 20 minutes to warm up. So you're almost at an hour at that point. So at 645, you're at 745. You still have the bottom of the fifth, top, the sixth and the seventh, two and a half innings probably to play in a game that's six to five on a field with no lights. There was already water forming on the field around the base pads, home plate and the pitcher circle. So it was a case of where obviously it's by the book. The officials did it right. It's a kind of rule that probably needs to be looked at and changed, but it's a tough way for a Lady Rams team that had hit Two home runs in that game already. Had a five to one lead. Got bound six to five. But you didn't feel like in that bottom of the fifth that Carbondale was exactly pulling away, and you felt like Mount Vernon had a chance. But unfortunately, the rule book spoke, and that's something the rule book probably needs to be changed in the postseason anyway. And that is where you hit the nail right on the head, and where I wholeheartedly agree with you is that no kid's career should ever have to come to an end. Especially in a game, it's not like it was fifteen to nine or or fifteen four or anything like that, in which it would have ended anyway. You know, it wasn't like an eight. Or you wouldn't even, game. and if it was fifteen right. four, you wouldn't have played at the bottom of the eight fifth nothing, anyway. Eight nothing, nine nothing. But it was a very close game. Lady Rams led most of the way, with the exception of that one half inning. And of course, yes, they they did get three outs without getting a run across the plate in the top half of the fifth. But the matter of fact is, is that no kids, no career, no high school kids' career should ever end that way. And I do feel awful uh, for the Lady Rams seniors. I would feel awful for Carbondale seniors if the roles had been reversed. But you know, it was a great game, and probably, unfortunately, the best game that we had gotten to see the Lady mm-hmm. Rams play all season. I mean, Paige Clinton leads off the game with a home run. Two batters later, you have um, Hannah Wright does the same thing. It's two solo shots in the first, and then Haley Lockhart. Gets a mammoth three-run blast, and that was the offense, those three home runs. Haley hit one over deep 
center field wall. I mean, <laughs> that's what I say. I yeah. mean, you you have it in the book, and I mean, you won't see that anywhere else. You know, for football, they're going to continue it. Basketball, you will come back and play. So again, you know, it's one of those little things. It's a rule set up that of all the rule makers and the gurus get in and make the rules. They never think about this. And I think for a postseason game, unless it's eight nine nothing and there's nothing going on and the team winning is pulling away or whatever, then you know that can be done or forfeit or whatever. But I think you should. They should have probably had to have come back the next day, picked up where they left off, and played that game out. I just, again, like you said, the the most hurting part of the whole situation is the fact that there's a group of seniors on that Lady Rams team that their career ended and really never got a shot on the field to play to take a chance to extend their career. It was taken away from them by the conditions in the rule book. And before you know, and it sounds like we're trying to to place blame, and we're really not. I mean. You know, the umpires who are, who were a quality crew on that game did what they had to do. They were the ones in control. They had to make that decision. And they did what they did according to the, the rule book. And, I mean, that's all that you can ask. And and that's what happened. They did the best they could do if they're listening. Obviously, we don't want them to think that we're placing No, we're blame. not bad-mouthing of officials at all. Hardly do we ever do that and, here. And getting to talk to, to Mike Mooningham before the Rams baseball game on Wednesday about it and saying, you know, there's there's been a lot of detrimental comments made toward toward Heron High School. It's not their decision. Nope. He you know, the A D or principal, whomever, is is a tournament manager, but the umpires control what goes on on the field, including the game and whether it continues, things like that. And and, it's not even the umpire's call. Yeah. It's a rule book. Right. The umpires are only taking the rule book and discerning the rule based on what's in that book. So don't blame the umpires, don't blame Heron High School. It's the rule book, and again, it's a rule that needs to be looked at and changed in postseason. And I have a feeling that, you know, that could happen. And odds are maybe you get that break if if you're the Lady Rams later on down the road and it happens again someday, but that doesn't help the class of 2013 whatsoever. And it wouldn't have helped the Carbondale class of 2013 Again, if the roles were reversed and the Lady Rams were the home team leading 6-5. to five. Just a bad way for a game to have to end. And Again, we understand it, but uh, many wondering, since we didn't have Lance on earlier this morning, of course, Lance will join us next week. We'll wrap up the Lady Rams season, recap it, talk about the award winners from the softball banquet, which, of course, is coming up on Thursday night. Felt it would be better, of course, uh, to get to talk to him next week to wrap up the season and get to talk about the award winners for a Lady Rams team that probably didn't have the prettiest record in the book, but... All in all, probably gave it the most effort and and should be commended for that effort. Of course, their season came to an end on Tuesday, a game you heard on AM 940 right here at WMIXSports.com, and uh, we commend them on such a great season. We need to take a break on the Saturday Sports Show. When we come back, of course, we will talk high school baseball, high school softball. It continues, of course, as we will talk 1A and 2A girls' sectional championship games. We'll preview those for you when we return. The Saturday Sports Show, powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. We're back up to these. Tired of trying to find the Chicago Cubs on TV here in Southern Illinois? Tune your radio to 98.9 Wish FM for the Chicago That's Cubs. That's one of the air. Deep left field. This ball's got a chance. Gone. And Pat Hughes, Keith Moreland, and Judd Surratt bring you all the action of the Cubs radio network on Wish 98.9. Don't miss a pitch on Southern Illinois' FM home for the Chicago Cubs. This ball's gone. Three-run homer, Alfonso Soriano, and the Cubs have broken open. It's Pat Hughes. Don't miss Cubs baseball on Wish 98.9. How do the best continue to get better? Hi, this is Chase Landers with Landers Collision Centers. We're no different than any team. When you're at the top of your game, the best wants to play for you. That's why, with the addition of our new shop foreman and the rest of our body shop crew, Landers now has a combined experience of over 70 years in dealing with the best parts and repair finishes on the market. This means when you walk into Landers, you can breathe a little easier knowing that your vehicle will receive the best quality repair by the best certified technicians within a reasonable amount of time. Again and again, we work directly with most insurance companies and have loaners and rental vehicles on site for your convenience. We're proud to not only be the standard, but to keep raising the bar in collision repair. Come meet the staff, take a tour of our facilities, and get to know the Landers crew that Landers Collision has so proudly acquired. Big or small, Landers fixes them all. Give us a call when 888-LANDERS. That's 1-888-LANDERS. You did it in the 
And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX and WMIXSports.com. It's powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what health care should be. Of course, we're so glad to have you. Of course, busy day in the world of high school sports today. Heron Regional Championship game will be on the air at 1045 with your pregame. The Mountford and Rams, the number one seed, battle the number two Centralia Orphans. We'll keep you up to date on the air, of course, with every pitch on AM 940 online at WMIXSports.com from any device. And you can follow along on the Twitterverse at WMIXSports. We sure hope that you will give us a follow. Goreville sectional, Odin sectional comprise your 1A super sectional on Monday at Johnson City. Of course, that'll be an 11:30 game on Monday. But before that, you have a championship game at Goreville that features the host Goreville Lady Black Cats, and you have the El Dorado Lady Falcons. Should be a dandy. Yeah, t- put this in your feather, your cap, whether it's today or next week. One of these days. That we need to discuss regional sectional super sectional times and why there's oh so, my gosh. so many around. Anyway. Goreville, Alvarado. That's a game that happened I, earlier in the year, back when Goreville was kind of, well, they've been up and down all season yeah. long, and Alvarado, you know, is Alvarado. Of course, Goreville gets there, they blank Galatia Thompsonville, of course, 11 to nothing on Wednesday, and then, or may have been Thursday, pushed back, I don't recall. But Alvarado, of course, comes, I think, 8 to, eight to nothing was a final in that one over Dongola, and it sets up this region, or sectional, pardon me, championship today. And If not for Cobden, if not for Goreville, Alvarado would be one of these teams that would be in that running because Gore, Cobden and Goreville have won four titles in six years, five years. Then this is Alvarado. They've had a couple. This is their second sectional final in about five years. And this is an Alvarado team that Goreville's got to be careful of. I know they're playing at home, and I know they're the defending state champs, but you better believe Goreville's got to be ready tomorrow. They're a team, obviously, barely above 500. they They've had their struggles this year for whatever reason. But, again, here they are. Everybody thought they were down. Here they are playing on the last Saturday in May, ready to go at home to take that next step to go back to East Peoria and defend their state championship at home today against El Dorado. Well, and that should have the makings for a good game. Elkville, or excuse me, El Dorado, I believe, won their first regional since 99 uh, last week. And Mm-mm. Really? They've won some more that since then? That can't be right, because they've, they've advanced in the That was so my long. research for the Carbondale game. Yes, that was the year that, that Kim Wheeler won. My right. apologies. It probably isn't. I know it's yes, not, because they've won plenty yeah. since then. Okay. It's all good. My, my apologies. It's all good. That's why all the here. research, busy week running together, of course. Bad time for the iPad to go black. Yeah. That happens. Of course, you have the Odin sectional on the flip mm-hmm. side. And last night, you know, a tough way to go for the Wayne City Lady Indians. They fall to Oakville 2 to nothing. Oakville pushes a couple of runs across the plate in the top of the seventh inning. Uh, the Lady Indians, I believe, three consecutive innings there to close it out. Stranded two runners in an inning. Uh, you strand six for the final like that. Usually uh, not going to work out. But got a bit of a break in the bottom of the seventh. Just couldn't get that two-out base hit that they needed in. So you have Oakville now battling Altamont, who got a big 16-9 win over Edwards mm-hmm. County. And, you know, we mentioned it a couple of weeks ago when we were previewing it from the outset. It might have been three weeks ago now when we were previewing the postseason. But, you know, Altamont, of course, has been up, 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 up all year. They beat Mulberry Grove, the last year's sectional champion, in a, in a regional championship game last week. And, you know, this week they come out red hot on on Wednesday afternoon. It was a game that should have been Tuesday, got pushed back to Wednesday. And then, of course, they had the weather issues on Thursday, and then that led to last night's other semifinal, Wayne City and Oakville. But it sets up as Altamont and Oakville. And, you know, the Lady Rockets have actually had a pretty good season. They've played a tough schedule, of course, as an independent. We've talked about that time and time and time and time and time again. But you kind of get the impression that Altamont coming out of the NTC probably going to be a favorite in that one today. Well, you know, we congratulate Wayne City. I mean, that was a nice run for them. I mean, they had a great spring season. We followed them all spring. We've had Coach Bernard on now a couple of times already this spring to talk to him about his team, and we congratulate them. They had to beat Woodlawn at Woodlawn, a team that went to the sectional final last year to win a regional. Had every chance in the world uh, yesterday against Oakville. Just couldn't get it done. Now, if you're Oakville, it's a quick turnaround. I mean, you just win a game yesterday, really close game, a lot of tension. You got to get excited, wound up, woohoo, we're in a sectional, all the excitement that goes with it. And in less than 24 hours, you're going to turn around and you're going to be back on the field again playing for a sectional championship. Very tough turnaround. Might actually help Oakville because you keep playing back to back days. We'll see. This game's really close. I think Altamont's probably favored a little bit with their offense, but Oakville could pull the upset with the schedule that they play. Well, and, and there's no reason to think that that's not a, a logical possibility. Of course, does 
playing the night before helped them give them momentum with having a couple of days off for Altamont. And the Lady Indians against the Lady Rockets today should be a dandy at 11 o'clock at Odin. And it kind of brings you to the other point of how nasty Mother Nature has been at times. And, you know, we talked about the Lady Rams last segment and how it ended their game. But this game got pushed back not only from Wednesday to Thursday, but from Thursday to last night, of course, as Tuesday's games were washed out most mostly across the region. But it ends up that Altamont is probably in a favorable position as, as a probably a tougher team. But Oakville may have momentum on their side, especially you know, scoring those runs late, scoring them in such an emotional way in the top half of the seventh inning and then able to close the door in the seventh, even though they struggled to get out of that seventh inning and get that final out. You know, it could be Altamont's to lose today. And if so, you know, we could logically be looking at Altamont Goreville possibly in the Super, which really wouldn't be all that different than, you know, Altamont beat Mulberry Grove. Mulberry Grove lost to Goreville last year. None of that means anything this year. It's just, I guess, fill time here in this 9 o'clock hour as we talk the 1A sectional championship games. and should be a great day of softball action in Class 1A. Should be. Two pretty good games, but favorites stick out there as well. Oh, yes. Of course, how about the Ren Lake College Super Sectional, Class 2A? It'll be Monday at 1 o'clock. Of course, you recall Johnson City, if I remember, is 11.30. This will be a rant we get to a little bit later on the uh, Saturday Sports Show. Uh, <laughs> Probably not right now. No. But you look at the DuCoin Sectional. We're going to skip that real quick. And head on, head on over to T-Town. We'll talk Ducoin after we talk T-Town mm-hmm. because we can probably spend quite a, quite a bit on the DuCoin Sectional. But you look at T-Town. Shelbyville fell to Carlisle, of course. So all the all Upset. the ink, all the ink was on their pitcher going to Arkansas, mm-hmm. which is a great softball program out of the SEC. But you look at Carlisle getting a three-one win. They'll play today at ten o'clock, right after the show gets over against T Town, who beat Fairfield. Ten a.m. starts. Here I go. Never mind. We're go not going to get there. I'll, yet. Sh- I'll be quiet. We're not, I'm going to get my going soapbox really high. Here. You know what? Don't complain because that's a scoreboard update for us in the in the mm, Rams game at 11 o'clock Let's, today. I can get you scoreboard updates. Well, we'll get plenty. I mean, but there's a lot that doesn't start till the same yeah, time. That at least gets us started in the pregame possibly. But anyway, right, let's go. The Wooden Shoes and the Lady Indians today at 10 o'clock at T-Town. Um, it's in the community park, of course, but basically T-Town always tough. Shelbyville, I really thought, was probably going to win that sectional deep down, and that just shows you what you know uh, sometimes. But it'll be Carlisle and T-Town today at 10 Carlisle, of course, you know, they had the same deal where the weather pushed them back. T-Town had to postpone Tuesday into Wednesday. Then they couldn't go yesterday and had to postpone that second semifinal to last night. But all in all, 3-1 victory for the Lady Indians and sets up it all. T-Town, T-Town colors. Yellow. Navy. Yeah, that's right, not purple. Anyhow, it was all purple last night, Shelbyville and Carlisle. But on paper, T-Town may be the favorite, but I think after last night's upset, You'll have an upset Don't minded Lady Indian team. Out. They're Their good. Their schedule, the Kokia Conference, they play a tough schedule. In the Kokia Conference, they play a good and independent schedule as well. And following them this spring, watching their scores and articles and box scores, you know, they beat Shel- Shelbyville was dead to right. I mean, everybody I talked to in that neck of the woods or covering Carlisle said, you know, and other teams said Shelbyville was the favorite. Well, Shelbyville's at home getting ready for travel softball in the summer, and here's Carlisle. And boy, oh boy, Carlisle softball's in a sectional final. Carlisle baseball's in a sectional final. Very, very interesting matchup. I think if I had to look, obviously T-Town at home, but boy, oh boy, you can't car- count Carlisle out in this one today. Well, the winner will get the winner of the Ducoin sectional today at 11 o'clock. If you're struggling to keep track thus far, you have a super sectional on Monday at 11.30 at Johnson City 1A. It works out if you're a fan because you can get to these games. Mm. But you go to Red Lake College, super sectional on 2A at 1 o'clock. Then you have the T-Town sectional today at 10. And then you have Ducoin an hour later at 11. It's Nashville Massac. And that was a game back in April that Massac won 3 nothing over a tough Nashville Hornet team. Hornets beat Frankfurt. Of course, that was split over a couple of days. Their game was suspended. Mm-hmm. One out shy of being an official contest, so they actually had to come back on Wednesday to wrap that up. Then Massac just narrowly slips past the Red Bud Mus- Musketeers in extra innings, one to nothing. Mass- Talk about a dandy. Ma- yeah, it was. And Red Bud was very underrated in this one. I thought Red what, Bud was... second in the Cahokia they, behind Columbia? They play a very tough schedule again over there. I thought Red Bud had an opportunity to really slingshot Massac County. They almost did. The throwing error in the 10th allowed to only run the score. Now, you get to Massac Nashville. Nashville, again, the state champs, had one week this spring where they had some toe stubs, and everybody thought, what's wrong with Nashville? They're down. Nashville is ready to go in this one. I'm, I, I feel like 
even that know that Massac beat Nashville three to nothing at Carbondale in a game earlier this season at SIU, I still feel like Nashville has something for Massac today, and that's why I got a good feeling about Nashville this morning, this always, afternoon. You always have to have a good feeling about the I Hornets. Do. I mean, the experience. The leadership, but still yet a bit of youth. You know, they know what to do. Yeah. I mean, Massac, don't get me wrong, great team. Undefeated, unbeaten, I should say. But maybe won the wrong game, the one at Southern. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just have a strange feeling that the Hornets yep. could win the sectional today. And maybe they, should, maybe they will, maybe they won't. There'll but. be a few people there at that one, because I think of all the games, there's a lot of good games today in all different classes. But I think Ducoin set up for a major crowd down there for this battle. Oh, I would hope so. That's a softball Huge enthusiast over there right on there. the south side of the new high school. Well, then you have that, and then you have the poss- I mean, just think of the matchups you could have in the Super at Ren Lake. Maybe a Nashville Carlisle, a Nashville T Town. I think it bodes well if Nashville's in that game, obviously, mm-hmm. against either one of those. But what an incredible Super that would. Either way, that's going to be a good either Super way. on Monday. Yep. That's going to be a good 2 A softball Down there game over in Lake, yes. on Monday. There is no doubt in my mind there. All right, 3A and 4A still to come here. We'll preview those regional championships going into the sectionals. We'll spend a bit more time on 3A and 4A because there's more games to talk about. We'll take a break here on the Saturday Sports Show. Powered by Crossroads Community Hospital, it's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Don't forget, on Facebook or on Twitter, hit us up on the social media, your WMIX Sports Question of the Week, Saturday Sports Show question, social media question, what have you. What are your Memorial Day weekend plans? Obviously, today, tomorrow, Monday, should have some decent weather, we hope. Uh, going into this Memorial Day weekend, what are your plans? Are you going to honor the reason for the holiday, maybe taking a memorial sum- celebration somewhere or observance, uh, remembrance, what have you? Or are you going to have a cookout? Maybe. We'll see. Answer us on Twitter at WMIX Sports or hit us up on Facebook, facebook.com slash WMIX Sports. We're back after these. Hi, this is Joe David Cummins, president of Community First Bank, asking why you bank with Community First Bank. Is it knowing your deposits are also vital to home loans in Jefferson County and our local economy? Is it having your choice of convenient locations and ATMs? Is it seeing a staff of friendly faces you recognize as your neighbors? These are all reasons enough to count, though you only need one, and we are honored you chose us. Community First Bank, welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC. When an emergency happens, time is everything, and you don't want to spend time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital. With our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge, the entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, call 911. We welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX and WMIXSports.com. Chris, you go with Danny Zerwinski in studio today, courtesy of Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. You bet it is. And, of course, 3A and 4A softball regionals and baseball regionals as well. We'll talk about those later. We'll wrap up today. And, of course, you have the Salem sectional next week, which features winners of Columbia, Heron, Triad, and Centralia. Of course, there's already one regional championship. Yep. They're not all today. There was one last night as Columbia beat Waterloo to win their own regional Four to three. Of course, Columbia, your Cahokia Conference champs, mm-hmm. if I recall correctly. Waterloo, always a threat, believe it or not, on the softball side of the Mississippi Valley. And that was a 4 3 end result. Waterloo led at 1.3 to 2, but Columbia comes from behind to win that one. They will get, of course, on Tuesday, the winner of your Heron Regional, which ends up as the winner of Carbondale and Heron. Heron snuck by Marion, as I kind of thought they would on Wednesday. And, of course, we talked, we spent some time talking about Carbondale Mount Vernon. That 6-5 game, weather delayed, weather shortened. And it'll be Carbondale Heron today, and that should be a great, great softball game. It'll be a great atmosphere on the other side from us as we're on the, we'll be at the baseball field and, of course, the softball facility just across from us. And Carbondale, of course, comes in the favorite. Heron, the upstart from the River to River Ohio division as they come in and have a lot of tradition at Gillette Field to play down there. But, boy, as the case may be, Carbondale's pretty darn good. I know Heron's slinging that shot pretty good right now with loading it up, but boy, you know Carbondale's playing pretty good right now. You got to look at the little terriers to win. Oh, I, I yeah, 
and and the big win and I'm not going to say that they gained the momentum by what happened on Tuesday whatsoever because they absolutely did not. In fact, it may may be tougher for them today. Heron at home, Carmdale will be the home team. Heron on the Fester going though. on, a lot of momentum. Maybe, <laughs> just kidding. Oh, guess who last night? I guess put on a heck of a performance. Who was that? I see what you did there. Guess who? Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Mm-hmm. Did you guess? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. CSI. <laughs> Where do we and go from else? here? CSI. Yeah. I have no idea. Carbondale Heron. Let's go to the next regional. Where is that? Centralia. How about that one? Today, of course, modern day Lady Knights, Centralia Annies. Modern day gets Servia a 9 0 win over Salem earlier in the week on Tuesday. So the Annies beat all in the East Richland in a walk off. Of course, Centralia's been known for walk offs this week, of course, but it was a 4 3 win over Alney on Wednesday. Sets up modern day Centralia. Modern day's 2 0 against the Annies this year. Always tough to beat a team three times. You know, it's like this. We saw Modern Day earlier in the year. They were very impressive. Centralia, last year's sectional final, regional on their home field. It's very tough to knock off a team on their home field. You'll see that several sites around Illinois. Uh, and if, you know, in this today, I, God, you know, you just you look at Modern Day and you look at Centralia, it's going to be a close one. And I know Modern Day's won already this year, but. Well, you just can't count out the Annies in this game. Being at home, you got a, I just, you know, got a feeling about it. I don't know why. Of course, that regional winner gets the winner of the Triad Regional, which is Alton Marquette and Triad. That's over. I Did that tell just you. happen? Marquette. Or is that baseball? Baseball. Alton Marquette. Here, here's 3A softball, folks. I know Mattoon's good or Mattoon, whatever you want to call it. Alton Marquette, we're just waiting around for them. That's all. That's what you're doing in 3A softball. I'm just. I don't want to pick anybody or disrespect the modern day Centralia, Carbondale, Heron, or whatever. Alton Marquette's it. Just saying. Pretty good, huh? Yes. So there you go. There we go. And that's what you have to look at. I think in this game, in this whole sectional, is Marquette. Sure, I can. I, I can concur. Okay. That's a pretty loaded sectional. Yes. Of course, luckily you don't have to worry about Matt Tewin until it's super. Right. You have Mount Zion sectional, which is the Rochester Regional, Urbana, Taylorville, Jersey. Um, yeah, why not? Rochester, you have SHG in Rochester. Sacred Heart. Mm-hmm. I just have a feeling. Yes. Um, yep. Did I do that right? No, but okay. go on. No disrespect intended. Urbana, of course, you have Champagne Centennial and Indicator MacArthur. That should be a good one, actually, it be. in terms I mean, of the Big you, 12. Big 12 rematches. They usually, when the Big 12 usually rematches and things, anything goes. That's how it goes in that, in that bracket. Of course, and then Jersey, you have Glenwood and Quincy Notre Dame. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Actually, it's one worth watching. Ooh, that's, not, see, not that's that all one there are. that, you know, I know it's three. Everybody goes, oh, it's 3A. We don't need it, you know. That one there is going to be nasty. That yeah, could well, be a especially really considering they game. both have to drive forever to get to Jerseyville. Yeah, they got to drive like eight hours. Woof. You know. How's that happen? That's the way it goes. Yeah, it is. It happens. Taylorville okay, Regional. Class. Mount Zion and Mattoon in the Weather Radio's least favorite game on the schedule. Oh, Mount Mattoon, Mattoon will win that game. I mean, Mattoon, Mattoon is very good at softball and I, twice as good at saying their names two different ways or twice as good at softball. They're really good. Pipeline to ISU more often than yes. not. Lakeland has a good program up there as well. So there you have it. That's 3A. At least the schools we're concerned with. You right. have a 4A just a couple of regionals I think that we're concerned right. with. Granite City, Planet Granite, probably has the most interesting regional championship today. Alton beat Granite twenty four one, followed by Edwardsville blanking Quincy ten to nothing. It sets up Alton Edwardsville, and Edwardsville typically the favorite, but Alton I believe went in there the one seed. Yes, Alton's pulled off a win this year. This is a toss up too. This is one of those rematches of conference play that these two teams get together and mean something in postseason and. I again, you have to look at it and go, you know, toss up. This is a toss up game. I know Edwardsville's the favorite, but boy, this is a toss up as far as Alton's concerned. Well, and certainly, and you take a look at the Belleville East Regional, which will wrap up with O'Fallon and Belleville East. O'Fallon, the one seed, one ten to three. East beat West, edging them seven to six. But I think, for obvious reasons, maybe the O'Fallon Panthers probably your favorite in that one. I would say they are. Belleville East has a lot of tradition at that level, doing very well, winning games. Uh, but I would think O'Fallon would be the favorite here today. Oh, there's no doubt in my mind. And that is a quick look at softball regional championships in Class 3A and 4A. We already talked the sectional championships today in 1A and 2A. Should be an interesting week in 3A and 4A sectionals next week. Of course, your Saturday sports show is your home 
for all the talk in local sports. We need to take a break. Brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. We are back after these to talk some high school baseball. When an emergency happens, time is everything, and you don't want to spend time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital. With our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge, the entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, call 911. America is a nation on wheels. Everyone has at least one automobile. We use them for shopping, work, everything we do. But they can be a threat. Some accidents can't be prevented. Your professional Pekin Insurance Agency, Page Insurance on Crown View in Mount Vernon, can help protect you from a large financial loss when an accident happens. Call Page Insurance today at 242-7000 about low-cost auto insurance from Pekin Insurance. Ask them about the many money-saving discounts that are available. Depend on your hometown professionals. Pekin Insurance. Hey, Mike Shannon here, and I know what it means to wear the Cardinal uniform. Mike Shannon has just tied this ball game up with a tremendous home run. Yeah, no doubt that was a thrill when I played. Now I get to describe other hometown stars making history. Oh, yeah, David Freeze has just sent us in the game number seven. There's nothing like it. The thrill of the Cardinals on the radio. Listen right here for Cardinals baseball all season. The Cards on the Radio. It's Cardinal Baseball on 50,000 watts of today's hot country. 94.1 WMIX. Do you feel like a man when you push her around? Do you feel better now as she falls to the ground? Well, I'll tell you, my friend, one day this world's going to end as your lives crumble down. Hard to talk when you don't turn your mic on, Hugo. Here we are, Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, WMIXSports.com. Brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. You bet it is. As we're talking some high school baseball now, shifting gears. 1A and 2A sectional championships going down. Of course, the Goreville sectional and the Toledo-Cumberland sectional will meet up in the Southern Illinois Miners Super Sectional on Monday. Let's see. At Goreville, you have Gallatin County and Shawnee. Of course, Gallatin County beat Cobden 6 nothing on Wednesday. Shawnee edged the Trojans, of course. It was 1-1, I think, heading into the 7th. 6th. Either way, yeah. it's a 3-1 victory for, for Shawnee, who went to the Super last year. And lost to St. Anthony. Anthony. Got it who that went time. on to win the state title. Congratulations to Sam Root and the Weber Trojans. I know that Weber Township had a fantastic year, had a lot of great kids. They got to host their first first regional ever in school history in any sport. Congratulations to Coach Root and his program, his kids, and that school. And They're going to be good for years to come, a tough loss earlier this week. I think, I know Gallatin County has had success in basketball. I think it is Shawnee, again, a team that gave Harrisburg fits earlier in the year. That's a game that stands out to me. And I think at this point, I know Gallatin County's looking to get tough and whatever, but I feel as though it, it, Shawnee is the favorite in this one tomorrow to get back to the Super Sectional on Monday in Marion. Yeah, no reason to argue that. I mean, Gallatin County's come a long way in this millennium in high school baseball. And well, I, I think that they would love to be able to run to a Super Sectional basketball and baseball. I just. You, you kind of get that feeling that it's going to be Shawnee's again this year and a chance to get to the Super where they would play the winner of South Central, imagine that, and at Windsor. And, of course, South Central got a big win over North Clay 11-3. That was an upset. Yeah. I think we did we because we well, consider here, North Clay a favorite. It's an upset because North Clay's played very well all year. However, you look at South Central's schedule, they're like 7-14 oh, yeah. and 14 coming into the postseason in the regional play. And I remember reading an article uh, when they were talking to a couple of South Central kids. I forget. I think it was in, maybe in the Sentinel. And it said they asked a player about, you know, you guys were seven and fourteen. What what sparked you? And that player said, "We're playing teams our own size. We would, you know, South Central takes on all comers. Have always done that. And that schedule will tell you when you're under five hundred and play schedule. South Central does, and then jump into one A." You're going to have some success. And I'm telling you what, that South Central team is playing with a lot of confidence right now, and they're playing on a roll. It would not shock me to see the Cougars at Marion on Monday. Not at all. I don't think it would shock the Cougars to see the Cougars at Marion on Monday. That's just Thank a you, great Rock. program. <laughs> but, I mean, seriously, when you think about it, I mean, South Central, of course, Coach Jones up there has done, I mean, for however long he's been there. 
almost it seems like an eternity just because you you always hear about South Central and mm-hmm. Coach Jones and, and just the job that he has done. And it would not surprise me to see South Central and Shawnee in an alliteration mm-hmm. super sectional. Mm-hmm. Yep. Heck, I'm two almost way. rooting for that just from yep. an alliteration standpoint. Uh, GCS Park super sectional, of course, in 2A as we move up a class here. Uh, you have the Nashville sectional, Ducoin and Carlisle. Carlisle just slipped past Nashville in a pitcher's duel on Thursday. You had Duke. Wow, Ducoin narrowly get past a Murphy team that was finally healthy coming into the postseason. 2 1 victories for both teams, and now you have Ducoin Carlisle worth the price of admission. Well, Coach Tim Kraft started his teaching career and coaching career at Carlisle. Got hired back at his alma mater at Ducoin. Been to state a couple of times. Most recently got third. Has a very veteran club, a lot of returning players from last year. They only really lost one. They blanked Mount Vernon early in the year. We saw them beat Mount Vernon 3 nothing. Mount Vernon has 27 wins. Ducoin's playing a Carlisle team. This is an instant classic. I mean, these are the two best teams in that sectional. Set all along and respect the other sectional. But the winner of this game will be a big favorite on Monday at Sauge to get to, to Peoria because these two teams are lock, stock, and loaded. And this, with the Massac Nashville softball game, is one of the best games in Southern Illinois today. Oh, no doubt about that. Mm-hmm. No doubt about that whatsoever. And Ducoin Carlisle, of course, I, I think is one of those that you, you pay the five bucks, you don't complain one bit because you're no. going to get more than your money's worth out of it. Regardless, and you know of how Nashville's going to have good food out there in a Horn oh, Cafe. Oh yeah. Oh no you doubt. No, they're going to have some good food. I mean, I, I think obviously disappointment there in Hornet Land, wanting to be in that game on their on their home field. But yep. Carlisle's good. Good. They're and very good. Both sides of the gender playing for a sectional title today. How about Gallatin County? Think about Gallatin County. Real quick, we'll yeah. go back there. Carlisle's in sectionals themselves. Gallatin County went to the Super in boys basketball, now in the sectional final in boys baseball. You don't get runs like this in schools the size that they have. You don't get runs like this a lot of times. Congratulations to those two schools for you know, sure. you know know for making their opportunity. Nashville as well for a sectional final, sectional semifinal. Great job on these schools' parts where winning breeds winning and the boys and girls programs go and do things well. Well, then you have T-Town hosting a sectional. And baseball, baseball too, and and T Town hosting both, playing in both. Yes, against Shelbyville in baseball, thinking that they're going to have after Shelbyville beats Harrisburg in eight innings on Wednesday. T yep. Town blank Flora in five, ten nothing. But you have T Town Shelbyville, and I think that once you got past that on Wednesday, I think coming in you had people just assuming, and we're going back to softball real quick. People just assuming it would be T Town and Shelbyville in both sectional championships at T-Town. And, of course, Carlisle had something to say about that on the softball side. But, you know, Shelbyville, give them a lot of credit. A good baseball program up there in Shelby County beats Harrisburg, and I think that kind of sent shockwaves all across Class 2A. Well, and then you got to remember T-Town in that bunch, too, because they were in the Super and Boys basketball. Here they are in the sectional final again. I mean, it's just winning breeds winning. And, you know, T-Town's T-Town. It wouldn't shock me to see T-Town Monday. And a T-Town Carlisle or a T-Town DuCoin matchup Monday at Sauge would be a heck of a game to drive over for 5 o'clock. There's a lot of great games getting ready to happen, mm. of course. Still some 3A and 4A high school baseball talk to come as regional championships wrap up today. Don't forget the Mountford and Rams Battle of the Centralia Orphans at 11 o'clock, 1045, your pregame on AM 940 and WMIXSports.com. We'll talk about that after the break here on the Saturday Sports Show. It's powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than hospital. It's what health care should be. Back after these. When an emergency happens, time is everything, and you don't want to spend time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital. With our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge, the entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, call 911. Allow me to introduce the all-new 2013 Lincoln MKZ. Hi, Roy Schmidt, Lincoln dealer at Ford Square, Mount Vernon. We are excited about the refreshingly new 2013 Lincoln MKZ and are confident that we have a bigger selection than anyone else in Southern Illinois. The new MKZ is the future of Lincoln design born today. With elegant fluid lines, every surface is faceted like the many dimensions of discovery. Those who seek new experiences will also delight in the many twists and turns of its athletic stance. Inside the MKZ, you'll find genuine wood trim 
with power windows that boast global open technology and premium leather trimmed interior. See our great selection of the all new 2013 Lincoln MKZ online at FordSquare.com or see one of our associates at Ford Square Mount Vernon, 1501 Broadway in Mount Vernon, Illinois, and find us on Facebook. I don't hate you, but I just want to save you while there's still something left to say. What when I told her I love you, girl, but I'm not the answer for the question. Andrew, welcome back on the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX and WMIXSports.com. Just a handful of minutes remaining here on the program today hour number two brought to you by crossroads community hospital it's more than a hospital it's what health care should be yeah, about 17 minutes left in the program still plenty of time to talk 3a and 4a boys baseball or wmix sports social media question of the week still live on facebook and twitter what are your memorial day weekend plans of course we'll talk about our answers or maybe just post them on facebook and give you a bit of a surprise a little bit later on. Of course, in 3A baseball, you have the Effingham Sectional, which features the Heron Regional winners, Alney, East Richland, Triad, and Columbia. Of course, we've talked at length about the Heron Regional Championship today. It's Mount Vernon Centralia. We talked to Tim Holloway earlier. Should be a good one. I mean, Mason McRecon went seven strong, through a win a complete game on Thursday against Carbondale, a one nothing victory. It ends up as a walk-off wild pitch, believe it or not. Crazy game. Was, I mean... Scoreless, both teams stranded. It was just insane on Thursday. Carbondale and Centralia. Winner, of course, got the number one seed, Mount Vernon Rams, who pretty well handled Heron over the final two innings on Wednesday. Don't count your chickens before they hatch. This should be a good one. This is one of those games. Mount Vernon's won both games this year in regular season. Uh, very close games. By no means dominated by Mount Vernon. Two very good baseball games with the aces going for the teams. This is a game, again, it's Mount Vernon Centralia. It could be checkers, twiddly winks, baseball, softball, whatever. This is a game. It does not matter who won the first two games this spring. You have a Centralia team that's holding that slingshot saying, okay, we'll take a crack at you. Great, you won the first two times. This is the game the Orphans want to win. I know Mount Vernon wants to win, but you don't go into this game as as a Mount Vernon Ram going, got this one covered. You have to be very aware that your arch rivals, the Centralia Orphans, would love to stop your season with 27 wins and say, glad you won two, we won the important one, we'll play at Effingham next week. And this game is going to be very close today. I think the only way you can exhale early is if the Rams jump on top early like they did in 2011. And those are two different teams, two different teams between Rams then Rams now, and four different teams, obviously. It's really a different team than they were in 2011. Had a great team that went to a sectional in 2010. Should be a good one today, and there's no doubt about that. I, I think the Rams have – you have to jump early, and and you're going to see a different pitch. Both teams are going to see different pitchers today with the Aces already having gone earlier in the week, at least I assume. And I don't know. I, I think that if you're the Rams, you don't want to win the reg- the conference championship – Beat Centralia twice and then lose to them today. Yep. I mean, no team yep. wants to lose in the yep. postseason. But conference championships great. But if you have a chance and you don't pull this one off today, then then that that conference championship is bittersweet. Amen. I, I mean, that's that's the competitor in everybody. Of course, you have the Triad Regional, which oh. we'll talk about here in just a moment. Yeah, because I got my regional battle the gladiators up. here. Heron meets the East Richland Regional Championship. Right. Effingham okay. upset number one Salem on. I don't call it, that's not upset. But uh, uh, by, by, by seats. I mean, Effingham, they're a good team. We're up and down all year. Salem, of course, the one seed coming in, won the Apollo. Mattoon, of course, beat Charleston. Effingham, Mattoon. I mean, most more often than not up there, that's a regional championship game every year. Should be another good one. Should be a good one. Wouldn't be surprised to see either. Either. Effingham yep. wanting to play at home. Uh, the Green Wave, of course, always good. I mean, not toss up. Them. Toss up, yeah. That is a toss up game. Of course, you're guaranteed a uh, Mississippi Valley team yes. in the sectional championship game. As this is the only, the Effingham sectional is the only sectional that I could find comprised of entirely intra conference, intra conference, yes, regional championship games. Of course, mm-hmm. all South Seven at Heron, all Apollo at Alney, and you have all Mississippi Valley everywhere else. Of course, well, you know, it was good discussion on the Twitterverse with our good friend Norm Sanders from Beville News Democrat about it. I mean, oh, yeah. it was good discussion about what's going on here next week at Effingham. Of course, you have Mascuda and Waterloo at the Columbia Regional Championship. How about Mascuda? The Purple Indians come in, beat Cahokia six to two. 
bad time for hiccups. Then you have they defeat Col- they upset Colombia. I mean, hello. Oh hey, yeah. Thanks for coming. <laughs> have fun at your own regional. They beat Colombia seven to two. Waterloo beats Freeburg and, and to nobody's surprise five to one. Yeah. That's gonna be a good one. I know Waterloo is a hands down favorite by far, but. Could They're be cold. Good. Oh, wait a minute. That, we were cold that day, too. Yeah, that's a good Never time. mind, yeah. <laughs> triad Regional, we'll skip to that. Oh this my. is exactly how we told you it'd play out. Highland Triad. Gladiator battle. They split, didn't they? I mean, this is another game. You know, there's so many today. Highland Highland Triad, two fantastic programs who've made state trips with Waterloo recently. These two are just, that's that's baseball that's like Gladiator in the Roman Coliseum. Who's ever going to come out? I mean, that winner could very well be in Joliet or Joliet, however you want to call it, later on in June. Great game here between Highland and Triad. That's a toss-up in this game for sure at the split this year. Well, and what a conference. I mean, what a conference baseball the Valley speaking, is in baseball. Yes. Well, yeah, only yes, baseball. Yes, baseball Anyhow, speaking. None of that. Next. Springfield sectional on the other side just because you kind of have to – yeah, because you know, they want to go to the super. Obviously, right. that's an important sectional to watch. You have the Sacred Heart Griffin Regional, which Chatham and Sacred Heart will wrap that up today. Chatham, mm, Chatham, but Sacred Heart has a Jason chance. Jason Worth High, yes. Uh, Lincoln Regional is a battle for Bloomington, public and private, with the Raiders and Central Catholic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That'll take it be or leave a battle, it. just rivalry wise. Rantoul, you have Champaign Centennial against Muhammad Seymour, who played two games on Thursday as they <laughs> went fourteen innings to beat Rantoul. Right. Um, Centennial is going to be up against the wall pitching. Yeah. It's going to be tough. I, Centennial, just for that reason. Right. Uh, Taylorville Regional, you have Taylorville and Rochester. Taylorville's a good baseball program. People, yes. It doesn't get a lot of credit. At a least lot of not, down, not down here, I mean. Yeah. And, and, you know, Rochester is okay. Obviously, football, they're bread and butter, but who, Taylor, Taylorville's not bad. But I, it's just Chatham, the favorite, if they can win that regional, get out in that sectional again. Oh, exactly. Yep. Of course, that's a quick look at 3-8. Don't yep. forget the Rams play today, 11 o'clock against the Centralia Orphans. We'll have that game for you right here on AM 940 online at WMIXSports.com. Taking a quick jump to 4A. Mm-hmm. Really two regionals we care about right. down here. You have the Edwardsville Regional, which will be Edwardsville and Alton. Mm-hmm. Of course, Edwardsville beat Quincy 1 to nothing, And I think a one-hitter for Quincy's pitcher, a two-hitter for Edwardsville's yes, pitcher or something like something that. Something like that, yes. Quincy's pitcher gave up a bomb. That was right, it. Right, that was it. Home run the six. What a game. Yeah. Can you imagine having been there? Can you imagine driving from Quincy down to Edwardsville That's and getting beat like that? Yeah. Ugh. Oh, that would be a long ride back. That's Hopefully they got a charter. Back. I doubt it, though. That's a two-state drive. Yeah. Has It'd to be. It would be quicker to come through Missouri. Yeah, it would. As dumb as that sounds, it's true. It would be, yep. Uh, Alton beat Danville, the Vikings, 3-2. to two. So it's Edwardsville. Oh, that could be a good one. Edwardsville is going to want to win that one. Just yeah, oh, yeah. Edwardsville is Alton. They, there's been some, you know, we were over there last week or two weeks ago, whatever it was, when Mount Vernon beat Edwardsville and talked with some of their players and some of their fans. They were wanting some payback. They were wanting to get Alton because, you know, Alton had beaten them. Alton's been talking. And, you know, Alton's, you know, and, and Alton's good. They got a good catcher, obviously, going Big Ten quality. So that's a rivalry game there. That's a big one. Of course, then you have the O'Fallon Regional. Oh, boy. Planet, Planet Granite, Granite and Belleville East. Granite upset O'Fallon 7-5 to five on Wednesday. They beat Collinsville 2-1. East one is narrowly. average at for, what, for what I we've seen. I thought West was heads and shoulders, hands over feet above East from what we saw this year. Granite's about matchups, but rivalry. That should be actually a... Hey, um, how much do I say it's a nice way? Mediocrity, good. Belleville East, Region. Belleville West, C. Mount Vernon Centralia this morning. Same right. kind of thing could happen. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So there we go. So that's a look at 4A baseball. We do have one more segment left here on the Saturday Sports Show. As we have about eight minutes left in the program. We need to take one final break. When we come back, well, what are we going to talk about? Stay tuned. It's brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Back after these. State Farm, this is Jessica. Hey, Jessica, Jerry Newman. Does State Farm offer more discounts to more drivers? Yep, like the good driver discount. So it's for good, but not great drivers. No, Jerry. There's also the multi-line discount. For calling from multiple lines while driving. You should never use a phone while driving. I only make calls from my car when I'm stuck in a ditch or something. Are you in a ditch? Yes, I am. State Farm offers more discounts to more drivers than any other insurance company. Get to a better state. One more reason to call State Farm Agent Tony Wilton Mount Vernon at 242-1421. When an emergency happens, time is everything, and you don't want to spend time in a waiting room. 
So choose Crossroads Community Hospital. With our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge, the entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, call 911. And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show final segment here, of course. Brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what health care should be. Yeah, we got about seven and change left on the program today, of course, taking you up to the top of the 10 o'clock hour. And before we get to Heron, of course, 1045 is your pregame today. Malford and Rams, Central Orphans. It's a regional championship game for a second time in three years between the two schools. Rams beat Centre, I think, 11-1 to or 11 to nothing back in 2011 at Marion. That probably will not be the case today. Mm-hmm. We talk, we've talked about that on and off. Two regionals and a sectional game in that run as well. Would that Let's be correct? See. I think a regional semi in eight, a regional semi in nine at Marion, mm-hmm. I'm, yeah. a sectional semi in, at, in ten at Altoff. Yep. The regional in 08, by the way, is at Mount Vernon. We have hosted a regional before, but I think you have to have a permanent crapper now to get a regional or something like that. Anyhow. Where was I? 11. Regional you allegedly have game. to have a grass infield to do things, too. But Yeah, we've learned in some places that ne- not necessarily. Yeah, the and case. then you allegedly, the turf idea of super sectional drives me crazy because you don't win a game on turf at state. So. Right. Anyway. Yeah, be that as it may. Yeah, so this is a lot that Mount Vernon and Trey could see each other. Took a year off last year, splitting up across Southern Illinois. Yeah. Well, hard to believe that. One good team season, of course, and that game will come to an end today. Plenty of good team seasons are going to come to an end all across the state today. 1A and 2A sectional championships, boys and girls. 3A, 4A regional championships, baseball, softball, of course. And I want to give a quick shout-out real quick. It would be remiss if we didn't mention Aaron Nybert, of course, yes. had a great tennis season. Uh, came to an abrupt end on, on Thursday, lost in the first round, and then lost uh, in the second round as well. We had the, the score on WMIXSports.com on Thursday, but... Uh, congratulations to Aaron Nybert. Just a great tennis season, and got up there to get to state one is tough enough in tennis. And then of course, we wish uh, Coach Dave Junkins the best of luck. He um, tendered his resignation this week, and and so you know left left the program in pretty good shape, obviously in, in boys tennis. So we wish the best of luck to Rams tennis all across the board. And you know, state finals going on in track and field. Good luck to everybody today that advanced to the preliminary from the preliminaries up at Charleston. Boys at Char- yeah. Wow, I just had a mental breakdown there but anyhow yeah but all of that said, i'm just staying course, out of the way while you're going no we're here. good i just can't add time very well you think just by looking at the clock and seeing that it's nine fifty something that right you know i didn't know what was going on so about four minutes i don't know what you got 55 wise, so i don't know what's going on yeah it's good times we actually got to think about what we're going to do to get out of here efficiently probably need to start tearing down now and start putting stuff away yeah because we gotta get the here. chopper and head south boy that's gonna be fun hope traffic's not at a standstill anywhere it probably is on 64 right well, now. I guarantee 64 <laughs> west of here it is on eastbound. Ooh, that's not been good. Woodlawn, course, Woodlawn is the new Daytona. I remember now. We didn't answer the Facebook question or the social right. media question, which is still time for you to answer, though. Though the program's getting right in, we leave it up there for your pleasure. What are your Memorial Day weekend plans? DC, what are you doing? I can probably already guess. Well, I got a golf. Got a little golf in. Uh, started yesterday heading out to the 74th Annual Senior PGA in St. Louis. We'll go back there again tomorrow. We'll play a little golf today after this Rams Orphans baseball game. Going to spend a lot of time with family and friends over the weekend. And uh, basically, for me, the number one thing is this weekend remember our service personnel who are actively serving or serving or have served. That's what this weekend's about. And it's one of those deals where if you see a member of the military out and about, a nice gesture would be, and I'm just suggesting, not saying you should, but I'm suggesting. And if you see them out having a meal or having a soda or whatever the case may be, offer to buy them something because they do so much for us to allow us to sit here and talk sports and do things like that and or go out and enjoy the world that we live in, our freedoms and everything. Just just do something along that line. Yeah, and, I mean, that's the whole reason. They're, they are the reason that we are here right now discussing this, that we have that freedom mm-hmm. to do so. And, and so, you know, look – Look in the paper, look online, of course, look anywhere, Facebook, They there will be times for you to go and maybe go to an observance. Usually you can find one in any square in any county uh, m- Monday morning. So that, that's a good thing to do. I am probably, my goal is to mow at some point. 
I, I love doing that. I yes. cannot explain why. You don't it's want good. that infamous sign in the yard. No, it's, it's relaxation for me. It's actually what it is. And I would like to be able to get to a ceremony at some point on Monday morning. Um, I don't know. I'd like to see some family, some friends. High I, school I, sports, maybe, depending on matchups and times. That's true. Um, there's some good supers going on on Monday. We got as well. NASCAR and IndyCar racing tomorrow. Oh, yeah. 1,100 miles of racing going on. Uh, yeah. The Indy 500. You know, back home in Indiana, sung. Somebody's once been again drinking by some milk on Pyle, Sunday. Jim Neighbors. 600 Thanks. miles of Coca Cola Classic in Charlotte tomorrow. Nice. Denny Hamlin on the pole. Of course, the Cardinals are in LA all weekend. I had to mention that. Somebody gave me trouble at work yesterday. won't name who. They know if they're listening. My guy's on the pole. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. It's not always a good thing. Well, it is tomorrow. Really? Well, now for a 600-mile race, it doesn't matter, really. But right. there were bragging going on in the hallway and yesterday with, at school. And with that, you get my knowledge of racing, though I've tried to be a fan for years. Just sometimes. Well, I'm in know, and out. There's a lot. There's golf. you got NBA. you got NHL. you got MLB. MLB, to me, this is the weekend of the first lap for me, the first curve, because now you've got enough games in. You can see some tendencies in some MLB teams at this point. Of course, Cardinals are the first team to 30 wins uh, in the National League, and the Rangers are the first to 30 in the American League. So there's something to look at. How about those Rangers? How about the Sports Illustrated cover for Cardinal fans where they had the hey. 2013 one compared to the one with Shannon Brock McCarver and all yeah. that? Great time for Cardinal fans. Yeah, it was. And the great thing about it is you don't worry about the jinx because two of them were already injured. Right. Unless they thought about it already, which I'm sure they have. So right. in that case, maybe it just extends before they even take the photo. Right. Yeah. All that said, hard to believe it's over. Don't forget our social media question of the week is still on Facebook. What are your Memorial Day weekend plans? We'd like to know. Do you plan to go to an observance of some sort, a remembrance ceremony? Uh, maybe at your local courthouse or, or maybe somewhere else or maybe uh, put maybe some flowers at the cemetery for our servicemen along with flags. Who knows? Plenty to do this weekend. Just be safe and come back to us next week here on the Saturday Sports Show. Rams baseball today. It's a regional championship. Hard to believe. <laughs> Can't imagine the Rams in a regional championship game, but that'll come with a 1045 pregame right here on AM 940, always online at WMIXSports.com, where we also archive our broadcasts. This broadcast will be no different. You can find it online at WMIXSports.com a little later on in the afternoon. That's going to do it for us today. However, we hope you take the time to tune into the Mountford and Rams. Uh, in case you're wondering about the Centralia Annies and Modern Day Lady Knights, you can find that game on our sister station, Wiley 1210, online at W. That's us. Online at MyWithersRadio.com slash Centralia. That'll be a 10:45 pregame as well as Centralia looks to win another regional championship on the softball side. Should be another good show next week. Of course, we'll wind down the Lady Rams season with Lance Bolt. We'll talk about their banquet on Thursday night as well. Thank you for taking the time. Happy Memorial Day. Many blessings to you. Please be safe. This is WMIX Mount Vernon.